On the record, the oh. time is 9.32. Okay. Ada, if you could get us started, please. Very good. Welcome, be judged for their concrete actions, not their fealty to arbitrary social norms and illusory categorizations. Let us reason our solutions with agnosticism in all things, holding fast only to that which is demonstrably true. Let us stand firm against any and all arbitrary authority that threatens the personal sovereignty of one or of all. That which will not bend must break, and that which can be destroyed by the truth should never be spared its demise. It is done. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Great. Uh, so pleased that you all are gathered here today. I want to be very, very clear. The purpose of today's meeting is to get to the truth. That's it. We are not a threat to you. I want you to know that. It's very important to me that you are aware of that. Do you understand that, Christine? I do. Thank you. Uh, I presumed Sorry, I shouldn't have been so presumptuous. Uh, we should start with who we are. Um, so I'm Matt Keziah. I represent the Satanic Temple uh, against the city of Boston on charges that the city of Boston is not inviting TST to the legislative prayer event uh, that opens public meetings. Uh, you just heard the invocation that we would have done. Uh, we've demanded it three times. The uh, consistent response has been, unless you have an invitation, you are not welcome. Uh, we cannot get an invitation uh, of our own devices, so we are seeking the court's assistance to get us that invitation. That's it. That's all we're here for. Um, the city denies the charge, says that it's our speech, and you are subject to invitation-only policies because that's just how we like to do things. Um, and so that's the, the nature of the dispute. Once again, I'm Matt Keziah, I represent plaintiffs. Uh, we have Rob and Nicole, if you guys could please introduce yourselves for the defendants. Sure, so Nicole O'Connor for the city of Boston. Rob Archangeli for the city of Boston. Uh, I have also with me my wife and law partner, Sonia, at council table and uh, representative, all oh, plural representatives of TST, Lucian Greaves, co-founder is also at council table and uh, this matter is being publicly recorded by agreement of the parties to be used only for posterity purposes, not live broadcast. That was the subject of dispute. We resolved it through rational discourse. That's what we're here for today. It's just rational discourse to try to seek an understanding, a joint understanding as to our side of the story and your side of the story. We uh, have brought pamphlets so you, you guys can see who we are. Um, you will take notice that this pamphlet, this will be, I'll just use this one as exhibit one. Um, you guys already have copies. Have you guys looked through these pamphlets yet? No. Okay. Are we doing the usual stipulations, Matt? Uh, no, no, uh, no stipulation so far. We can get to that point. Uh, actually, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, in terms of stipulations, I propose as follows. Um, there are lots of legal rules. I can't frankly remember all of them unless they're very specifically cited and I'm researching at the time. So I propose we simplify things as follows. 
Uh, I promise not to harass. I promise not to intimidate. I am trying to be, although I'm angry about this matter, I'm trying to be very, very clear that my anger is not directed at you personally or anyone in this room. I feel angry personally about being excluded from things. That's, that's my deal. I'm trying to keep it under wraps. So please bear with me if I sometimes get excitable in the matter. Um, I, relatedly, will not threaten anyone. I ask that no one threatens me because, again, I'm prone to excitement. Uh, only questions about this dispute. No getting into anything untoward. If anyone has an objection as to anything that I do, please let it be known. We'll try to address it, again, through rational discourse. Um, no statements, only questions. I'm inquiring into your mind. I'm not here to make any particular points. These are my proposed offers. Are these offers acceptable to you guys? That's acceptable to me. I'm also going to abide by the usual stipulation in that I'm going to reserve all of my objections as to accept us to form until the time of trial. Okay. I would like, if it's a form objection, for us to have a, in, in like a, a specific addressing of what the objection is sure. so that I can try to fix it. Um, I also request no semantics games, no games of, you know, I don't know, uh, mincing of words. I'm not very good with words myself. Despite being a lawyer, I find myself consulting the dictionary quite regularly, in fact. Um, no leaving. We're kind of stuck in here uh, until we understand each other. That's all I'm trying to get to. Um, no talking to your lawyers uh, during these proceedings. So we are now in the part of the conversation where I'm inquiring into your state of mind. Yours, of course, being the cities of Boston's. Um, also, short of there being a privilege objection, I ask that you answer the question. It will be sometimes perhaps subject to a, a, an objection as to form, perhaps, or some other kind of objection to the extent we can't resolve the objection amongst ourselves. Um, I propose that we just discreetly table them. That's all I ask, is that the issue be discreetly stated. Any, any objections as to that? Nope. Okay. Um, before we begin, can we, can we put the oh. light, lights up just a little bit to where they were? Thank you. Let's see here. Um, so phase two of things, you mentioned that you're gonna reserve all objections for trial. That would resolve the next phase to the extent you have any objections, I say for trial, uh, for you know whatever next set of proceedings, uh, I also propose that any disputes be resolved by Rob. I know Rob, I trust Rob, I know that Rob knows the law. Um, so it will be either one of us, it may be me. I'm sorry if you're stuck with me, I'll do my best to get the law right, but I, you I'm got not, me today. Hold on, I'm not stuck with you, uh, to be clear, <laughs> I want to talk with you. I brought you guys here for the purpose of talking to you, for the purpose of saying, here is where we are coming from. I want to know where you are coming from. That's it. That's, and again, not through statement, because that part happened already, uh, through question. Um, so you and I might have a dispute. I say you, council table, city of Boston, and I might have a dispute. All I request is that to the extent there be contention, Rob be intervening to fix the contention. I hope it's a non-issue, but I think, I think this will be an issue that we don't need to worry about. Okay, um, can we table that then in the event of contention? I mean, these are very bizarre sort of stipulations or suggestions for a typical deposition. I'm happy to, we'll work with you amicably to resolve any issues, and I think this is a non-issue that we don't need to worry about. And if we should get into some sort of dispute, I think we can cross that bridge when we get to it. Understood. Okay. Um, once again, no contention, just looking for the truth. And uh, to the extent we have any tabled issues, those obviously have to go to the judge. Any objections as to anything that I, I have proposed here? No. Anyone at all? Okay. All right. So that being the case, uh, we have some important public documents that I just want to make reference to. I see no reason to show anyone them. There was the complaint. There was the answer. There was the motion to dismiss. 
There is the order granting the motion to dismiss as to part, importantly on the issue of government speech. And then Shirtliff came out, which importantly said that government speech cannot be used to exclude certain religions. Um, any objections as to the court taking note uh, in, in, the court, uh, in the course of understanding the rest of this deposition of its own public docket? I, I don't really understand what you're asking on the record, but. Um... Uh, and to be clear, I'm not saying this for the court's benefit. I'm saying this for the congregants' benefit. Okay, uh, the I don't... congregants are, are going to be needing to know that they need to take a look at the complaint, the answer, the motion to dismiss, the order granting motion to dismiss, importantly as a government speech, and short lift, which overturned government speech. That's the only thing that the congregants need to take note of. I'm telling them this by using those words. Okay. Um, but, you know, again, obviously the, the court's going to take note of its own docket. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out document numbers if, if the needs end up being. So, um, that all being the case, I propose that we proceed with the deposition. Any objections? No. Great. Uh, please. Identify yourself for benefit of the public. Christine O'Donnell, I'm the compliance director and staff counsel for the Boston City Council. Do you want, I'm sorry to interrupt, do you want her sworn in first or? Oh, um, uh, Christine, are you gonna lie? I'm not, but. Um, I think we should swear her yeah. in for the sake of consistency. I like ceremony, let's swear her in. Can I ask you to raise your hand? Sure. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this cause now and hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Great. Um, let's, let's start over. Okay. Uh, please identify yourself. Christine O'Donnell. I'm the compliance director and staff counsel for the Boston City Council. Okay. And why are you here? I am here under the deposition. I'm representing the city of Boston. Okay. And that's pursuant to a rule 30 B six deposition. Correct. 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 Um, what is a rule 30 B six deposition to your understanding? To my understanding, I'm here to represent the city of Boston under the federal rules. Uh, and with regard to the federal rules, you're referring to the federal rules of uh, procedure, I gather, is yes. that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, tell us more about the federal rules of procedure. Objection. What, what's the nature as, of the As they pertain to what? Uh, she's the one who said it. I'm asking her to expound. On her understanding of what the federal rules of civil procedure are? Correct. Okay. Just my understanding is I'm here because of that rule. I am not a litigator for the Boston City Council, so that it's my understanding that I'm here pursuant to that rule. Let, let me back up with a little bit of exposition. The lawyers in the room speak a certain language that the congregants do not speak. I'm trying to take out the legalese. So 30B6 means something to all four of us, and also Sonia, uh, it doesn't mean anything to them. So when you say 30B6, I know what you mean. They don't know what you mean. What is a 30B6 deposition? To my understanding, I am here representing the city of Boston. In the matter of the Satanic Temple versus the city yes. of Boston, correct? Yes. Okay. And you are here because we uh, called for the deposition, correct? Yes. And more particularly, we called the city uh, of Boston to send a representative to defend itself against the complaint, and we're gonna be talking, generally speaking, about the complaint and answer and the allegations therein. Is that Co also correct? Correct. Okay. Um, would you agree that the subject of dispute is whether the Satanic Temple um, is entitled to an invitation as opposed to subject to an invitation-only policy with regard to the opening of public proceedings with a legislative prayer? Could you repeat that? Sorry. Um, what is your understanding of the nature of the dispute? My understanding of the nature of the dispute is that the Satanic Temple is suing the city of Boston so that the Satanic Temple can give the invocation. And uh, you heard the invocation earlier, is that correct? I did. Okay. Uh, how did the invocation make you feel? Objection. So she's here for a 30B6 deposition. Correct. Her personal thoughts and opinions are not relevant and not part of a 30B6 deposition. Do you have a rule to support your premise? Rule 30B6. Uh, what is the text of Rule 30B6? I don't say? have these types of rules offhand, but my position throughout this deposition so that we're clear is that Christine will only be answering questions about the topics that we have designated her to testify about in the 30B6 subpoena. I respectfully disagree. It's my understanding of 30B6, and I'm quoting here from my 30B6 book, uh, and I'm, the title of the book being 
30B6, Deposing Corporations, Organizations, and the Government, second edition, uh, by an author whose name I can't pronounce. Uh, I'm looking at page 172 now. The title of this, of this section is, What Can You Ask in the Matters of Examination? Given the title of the book, we all know it's about a 30B6 deposition. Uh, it states, 30B6 itself does not limit the matters of examination that a requesting party may seek in any way. Um, so your proposition of the law is inconsistent with mine. Do you have authority that overpowers my authority? So my position is that she's not going to be answering questions that are outside the topic on the 30B6 deposition subpoena. So Perhaps it makes sense for us to caucus, Rob and I can caucus, and maybe we need to file a motion with the court to get some parameters on what will govern this deposition because we're in for a long day if we don't have at least a basic understanding of, of that. I thought we just addressed that when I said I'm not going to be doing any harassing, any you know, threats, only questions about this dispute. You guys agreed to all of this. This is about this dispute, is it not? This dispute in the context of a 30B6 deposition. And I'm not suggesting that you're harassing her. I don't think you intend to do anything like that. But the purpose of a 30B6 is to designate topics. Yes. And she is here to testify about the topics for which we have designated her. OK, so it, it seems to me that you're proposing that the, this is outside of the topics listed in the deposition notice. Is that exactly. correct? Exactly. OK, let me pull that up, because frankly, I don't remember what it says. Um, and you also invited a possibility of caucusing. Do you guys want to caucus and then caucus off the record, reconvene, and then we can discuss further? Or how do you guys want to do it? Sure. While you review the, the 30B6 topics, why don't Rob and I go speak and we'll see how we want to proceed. Okay. Okay. The time is 9.49. We're off the record. Okay. We are back on the record. The time is 11.37. Great. Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier that we have uh, invocations at these meetings. Do yes. That? Yes. Um, oops. Sorry. I don't have my mic on. Do I need a retake? No. Okay. Great. Um, so meetings happen. It's meetings of the public body. The public body has these meetings for the purpose of voting on things. And um, is it fair to say that the public body starts its meetings with an invocation? Yes. Okay. Tell me about these invocations. So, like I said, the counselors invite someone to give the invocation and at the beginning of, before the meeting starts, at the beginning, an invocation is given. Okay. Uh, describe the invocations that are typically given. So, generally they're relatively short. Some have been a few minutes, but generally they're relatively short and whoever is giving it, um, let me backtrack a little bit. The counselor that extends the invitation introduces the individual prior to the in, prior to the individual giving the invocation. Can I can I pause you there? Sure. Uh, what does a typical introduction look like? The counselor says, "Oh, I'm here with um, so and so. Um, so and so is from wherever. Um, I know so and so." Personally, uh, we've been friends, or I know so-and-so because they do work in my district, or they've done, you know, my constituents are familiar with them, thing, things of that nature. Okay. And to recap, this is happening at a public proceeding, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, they're, re they're recorded. Yeah. And they're on YouTube, we talked about. Yes. I happen to have a YouTube uh, ready to go for an, an example invocation introduction um let's watch it together this is uh for well actually we don't even need for benefit do does it have the caption in the official court record uh, meaning like does it say when this meeting takes place or do i need to identify that for benefit of the record it says it up there i believe well let's just let's just make it easy this is august 18 2021 which obviously is after the complaint um if we could press play, please. Uh, thank you to those from the chamber. Thank you for once again keeping your masks on. Let's pause here. Um, we are presently watching a video uh, with some guy in a suit with red hair talking. He appears to be at the head, head of the proceeding. Who is this guy? That is former Councillor Matt O'Malley. He was the council president pro tempora at the time of that meeting, which means ah. because 
the council president before him was serving as acting mayor at the time. So when um, the council president becomes acting mayor, mm -hmm. the title that we give, Councilor O'Malley was vice president of mm -hmm. the council, but when he's acting as the president, the title is council president pro tempore. Latin for literally just temporarily. Yes. Okay. Um, so this person is actually administering the proceedings. He's not just some guy. He's the person officiating the proceedings. I wouldn't use the term officiating, but oh, I'm he's sorry. Um, acting as the chair. Yes. Council president, and he also is the district sixth. Okay. City councilor. Sorry, that's a that's an time. that's a that's a translation error. So uh, officiate, uh, what you just said to me is the word officiate. Okay. Um, literally just to administer a matter. Um, so this person is officiating. He's about to introduce someone, presumably. Um, let's let's proceed. Councilors have the right to take him up during their remarks. Um, folks can watch this council meeting live on YouTube by visiting boston.gov slash city dash council dash TV. Uh, we're going to begin, as we always do, with an invocation. I'd like to uh, invite Councilor Wu to please offer remarks uh, introducing the uh, uh, member of the clergy, uh, which is uh, uh, to uh, bless this body as we begin our meeting. So, Councilor Wu, the floor is yours. Okay, let's pause Thank here. Um, this is now Mayor Wu, correct? Correct. Um, and as we see on the subtitles, uh, pro, uh, temporary uh, officiant says, um, she invited this person. Uh, she decided, in fact, to invite, as, as I recall what he said. Yes. Is that consistent with your recollection? Yes. Okay. Uh, is this phase so far pretty much the norm? Yes. Okay. Let's continue. Mr. President, and I'd like to invite uh, Pastor Hall up as I introduce her. I am so deeply <coughs> humbled and honored that she's joining us once again Pause in here. the chamber. Um, is it normal for an introduction to involve some kind of an endorsement of the person who's being introduced? Humbled and honored. Objection, answer. Um, I've, I've heard it said in the past I mean, I don't know if I consider that an endorsement. I mean, obviously, if the counselor is extending an invite to somebody, they know the person yeah. through ver various work and things like that. So yeah. I would think that that's common speak in the interest of politeness. Okay. Uh, and common, though, is this is pursuant to the custom. I, well, maybe I should. Um, I've heard it said before. I, I can't approximate how many times, but I've heard similar language. Okay. Uh, and I'm pleased. I'm pleased to have with us things like that. Okay. Um, and when you said you've heard it said, but how many of these meetings have you seen personally? Oh well, I've been there um, eleven years, and they're on Wednesdays. Um, we have uh, give or take about twenty-five to thirty a year. So, and I've attended most of them unless I'm on vacation or. Um, things like that so I do, because of my um, my job okay so if I if I understood you correctly you've been there 11 years there's on the order of 25 to 30 per year whatever that math works out to is give or take probably mm. about as many as you've seen yes um, how often can you recall them not including some kind of pleased to introduce I'm humbled and honored some kind of a, you know a, like a, a welcoming uh, introduction I mean, I don't know if I can say an exact amount. Generally, because the counselor brings the person up, they yeah. say, I'm inviting so-and-so up. So I don't know how else That's okay. they would bring a person up. And is it fair to say that um, it's the city of Boston's perspective that obviously they're inviting this person? They literally invited them? Yes. OK. All right. Let's continue. Dr. Arlene O. Hall is an ordained minister in the Church of God. She's a native of Jamaica, where she accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior as a young woman and sent to follow here. God on her... On her um, the banner is covering it, or maybe the, uh, the, the subtitles are, but I seem to remember... Well, actually, I, I deduce from the way that she's looking. She appears to be looking down as if at her phone. Um, 
is it normal for the, who would normally write this introductory uh, speech or whatever it is that you want to call it? It depends on offices. Some counselors write their own notes. Some have a staffer do it and make edits. Okay. So it would, de it would depend on how Counselor Wu at the time structured her office. Okay, this was in t August of 2021. Uh, I designated this deposition in June of 2022. So this is on the order of like 10 months beforehand. Did you talk with any of Mayor Wu's staff at any point? Are you asking if I talked about this particular no, meeting? No, just gen or? generally, I, I'm, tr I'm I, trying to understand her general way of doing things. I talk to her staff all the time. Well, remember earlier we talked about you performed some kind of an investigation in preparation for today's meeting. Um, I'm inquiring into whether that deposition included determining whether she normally reads off her own notes or she normally reads off of someone else's given speech. I have, did not to talk to her staff about that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, hold on now. Let me, let me notate that. Did not have it. To staff. Ooh, staff. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's proceed. For life at a young age. Uh, she has graduated from the Church of God Ministerial Program and has a Master's of Arts degree and Master's of Divinity degree from Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary in Boston. Pause in here. Pause uh, she specified a university in Boston, neither of which I'm familiar with. Are these fancy degrees? Is this, is this something that I'm supposed to be impressed by? Direction. In your so opinion? You? you can answer if you can. I mean, I don't know. I. I imagine some people are impressed by advanced degrees. Well, I'm, I'm asking if these are fancy institutions. Objection, you can answer. In your opinion. I don't know. Perhaps. Have you heard of these? Have you heard of these institutions? I have, yes. Okay. When did you first hear of these institutions? I can't recall. When did you most recently hear of these institutions other than Well, this? I mean, this was, um, like I said, you know, we, we're busy in the city of Boston, so I can't remember if I first heard of them then. This was in 2021. Now I'm, I'm recalling it, so. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't care about this. I, I'm I, don't, I, don't, I can't recall when I first heard of the institutions. I more accurately asked you when you most recently short of hearing it on here. I cannot recall. So it's something that without a particular event, you just know what these things are, these institutions that she's describing. Correct? Um, yes. Uh, famous would be a word that I would use to describe something that I don't need to specifically recall. I just know what it is. Uh, would you describe these institutions as famous? No. No? Okay. Um, what is your definition of famous? Um, I normally don't um, think of it, but something that is widely known. But again, famous can be subjective based on an individual's interest. Okay, so you're, you're eliminating the subjectivity from the matter. Uh, how would you describe these institutions that I, she is designating? I don't know how I would describe them. You have no way of knowing how you would describe these institutions that you have no need to specifically recall, you just I know just, what it is. Higher, higher, higher educational institutions. Okay, uh, please continue. Mr. Hall, along with her husband, Bishop Raymond Hall, answered the call of God and founded Deliverance Temple Worship Center, a dynamic church in the inner city of Boston, Massachusetts. Currently, she serves as founder and lead pastor of DT. Pause where here. God is transforming the life. I take note in the subtitles that she's referring to this church as a dynamic church. She's characterizing the church in the course of this speech. Do you take note of this? Yes, I see that. Okay, please continue. ...of men and women positioning them for their destiny. She's a woman of integrity with an engaging and congenial personality. I can vouch for that. Pause and there. unique style of preaching. In your, in your experience, how frequently do the uh, inviting counselors vouch for the credibility or integrity of the people whom they invite? Often, because again, like I said, 
it's by invitation and the counselors have a personal relationship with the individual or are familiar with them because of work in mm -hmm. their district. Okay. Um, vouch has a very particular meaning to me and I don't want to color your understanding of the word. How do you define the word vouch? That you are... Um, that you're standing, um, not standing, um, that you're attesting to somebody. Okay, so she is, um, well, when you say attesting, to me that means just in court. So maybe that's not, maybe that word's not carrying over. What do you mean by attesting to someone's character? That you know the person. Well, she's describing the person's character. Well, my definition of vouch is that I know somebody. Okay, um, all right, and so as the city of Boston's representative, this is your city employee uh, currently vouching for the integrity of a particular clergy member. Um, how do you respond to the charge that that is a governmental endorsement of a particular religion? Objection. She's not answering that question. Admit or deny. Admit or deny. Oh, I'm sorry, you're telling this witness that whether the government endorsed this particular religious belief is outside the scope of this 30B6 examination, correct? Correct. Okay, and once again, you don't assert, assert any privilege ground for this, correct? Correct. Okay, uh, let's continue. Teaching has reached beyond traditional cultural, ethnic, and generational barriers. She has many, many roles also outside uh, her, the, the four walls of her church, in addition to being lead pastor, she served on boards in, in Boston uh, and as well as within the Church of God denomination. Pause here. When you talk about leader... Uh, is it common for the counselors in these kinds of introductory speeches to uh, make mention that not only is this person that you're about to hear from a uh, religious leader, but they also are a leader in the public as well? Yes, that is common. Okay, please continue. ...in Boston, especially within the black church community, a name that consistently services is Dr. Arlene O'Hall. After serving on the board of directors of the Black Ministerial Alliance for over 12 years, in June of 2016, she was voted in a historic move as the first woman and the youngest president to serve as uh, head of the BMA. So, very honored she is with us today. Pause here. Have you heard of this... Uh, BMA, Black, uh, I don't remember the rest of it, but basically whatever this alliance organization is, is that a public body or is that some non-public charity? I am not sure. I don't believe it's a public body according to my definition. Okay, yeah, well, literally, like, is it part of the city is what I'm trying to ask. Like the city no. organization. Okay, cool. Um, so I didn't hear anything that appeared to be abnormal relative to the norm in this example introductory uh, speech. Do you agree with me that that was a relatively normal speech? Yes. Was there anything about that which sets you off as that that's abnormal? That it's what? Abnormal. No. You said it's relatively normal. I just want to, you know, back in it from the other end. It's, you know, this is a, this is a normal intro. Yes. In other words. Okay, yes. cool. Um, all right. Uh, now let's watch an intro... We've seen the introduction, now let's see how these things usually go. Rizzo. Thank you so much, Councillor Wu, for the invite to be with you, Mr. President, and to all the members of the Boston City Council, the Lord bless you. Pause, pause here. How often, um, how often does this begin with some kind of pre-blessing blessing. So I can't state a specific time. Like I've said, I've gone to numerous of these. They're all recorded. They're all online. Mm -hmm. So it, it just depends. Did you watch any other invocations than what we're watching right now? Yes. As I said, I've attended pretty much every single meeting since mm -hmm. I started in 2011. I asked a poor question. I apologize. I meant more particularly, did you watch any of these pursuant to your investigation for this particular purpose? No. Okay. Please continue. I was with you earlier this year, and that was via Zoom, and so we're grateful for physical presence. Pause here. Let us 
she mentions that she's been here earlier this year, which means since this complaint, this person that we're looking at has been here at least two times. Do you agree with this? Yes, and if I could just, I didn't watch any videos, but I reviewed the minutes, mm -hmm. which list the clergy. And yes, there are some individuals that have come more than once. I see, so she's a, a how often is it that people um, are invited more than once in any given year? I don't know an exact amount, but there has been times in my research, there may be, you know, probably, probably under under um, 10 people have done it more than once. But there are people that have come more than once. And reasons for that is there's 13 members of the council. There's four at-large members. So four members are citywide. And there may be times where a citywide councilor and a district councilor have overlap. So that... That could be. Yes. But you didn't actually talk to Wu's people, so you have no idea whether or not that's actually the case. Correct? I didn't talk to Wu's people about who wrote her notes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you talk to Wu's people about this particular invocation and why this particular person was invited more than once? No. I didn't think so. Um, let's... You said that there were 10 people over the course of your research that have been invited I said approximately. I was trying Thereabouts. to give a number based upon my review of the minutes. And I, I did notice that some people have come more than once. Um, do you have a list of, like, have you taken notes? Did you literally write down the number of people or the identities of said people who have come more than once? I didn't write them down. I did take some notes, but I didn't write every single one down. But I did notice that there were some people that gave an invocation more than once. I don't know if it was a particular year where it was more than once or if it was over my course of review yeah. that they've come more than once throughout my 11 years of being there. Okay. You mentioned you took notes. Did you take the notes for the purpose of preparing for this deposition? I did, yes. Uh, can I have those notes? Objection. I'll think about that. Well, you're objecting to it and you're saying you'll think about it. Well, I'm I'll, not I'll sure think about whether we'll produce them. Okay. Uh, when did you create these notes? Over the course of the last couple of weeks. Okay. How, what form are these notes in? They're handwritten because they're my personal notes. Handwritten. Uh, well, they're not really your personal notes. They're in, pursuant to the requirements of your job, correct? Okay. So they're handwritten notes made because... Well, actually, it's not the requirement of my job. I was taking them in preparation for this deposition. Well, yeah, but you're here be for the purpose of the deposition, yes. right? Um, who told you that you have to be the person who's doing this? I uh, was designated as the person on City Council Central Staff that can speak to the policies okay. of how the invocation is given. So you're talking about Central Staff. What is Central Staff? Central staff is where I work. We work, there's a, um, 10 of us about that work for all 13 counselors. Okay, so it's just like a, like a cent, literally central staff, okay. Yes, yes. Um, other than you, who other kinds of people are on this uh, central staff? We have a technology person, we have a budget person, and we have legislative aides. Do you have... Oh, sorry. That um, they help with uh, committee hearings and things like that. Do legislative aides have any notes or anything to the effect of, basically, is there anything relevant to this dispute uh, within central staff's no. records? No. Okay. You guys did a comprehensive sweep of everything, then I have everything of relevance? Yes. Other than your notes? Yes. Okay. So... Uh, you made this, so some, you were designated, you emphasize, uh, or rather I emphasize, you were passive tense uh, designated. Who designated you? Well, for certain subject matters, I was designated. I understand that. I've, it's been made abundantly clear that for certain matters, you were designated. I'm asking who designated you? Who made the decision to designate you? When I met with council and I explained what I did, it was agreed by the president of the city council and in discussions with our council that I would be the one designated for these topics. 
I honestly don't know what you're saying. I'm asking who is the person who told you that you have to do this? Did you volunteer or were you directed to do it? I mean, I, I volunteered based on my role for the okay. city council. Okay, so. And in discussions with the city's lawyers in preparation for this. I see. Um, and to recap, you are an agent of the city and also you made these notes pursuant to your agency and more importantly pursuant to the greater purpose of preparing for this here deposition. Yes. Correct? Okay. Um, and so to recap, they're handwritten notes. They were made within the past two weeks. Um, where are these notes? They're in my office. Okay, so you and are- And they're the not complete, by the way. I just reviewed, I was going through past um, minutes from years 2011 to 2015, yeah. just to refresh my memory. Yeah, yeah. So they're not complete. They're very, you know, just to, so I would have a track in my memory. So they're not complete. Well, if you have, I mean, if you're anything like me, your notes are nothing more than chicken scratch anyway. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that that's what my notes are. I'm not suggesting that yours are. I'm just saying yeah, those are mine. probably. Um, so two weeks, handwritten notes. You are the custodian? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm notifying you now. Please don't shred those. Please don't sure. lose those. I will be seeking those pursuant to the rules of discovery. Okay. So... Returning back to central staff, there's on the order of 10 people. Wait, no, no, we don't need, we're done with that. Okay, let's continue. For I want to ground our time of prayer in the Old Testament text of First Chronicles 12, verse 32, and it tells us that the men of Essekar had an understanding of the times. They knew what translation said, the signs of the time with knowledge of what to do. They knew the best course to take. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for these your servants that have answered the Pause call. Here. To um, she is directing this blessing to the people who vote on public matters, correct? She's, you're asking if she's addressing it? She's them? literally blessing those people. The, 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 the body public, which is being met, she is literally blessing the proceedings. You understand this, right? I don't know Objection. if I admit you can answer. I don't know if I'd classify it as that. She said, let us pray like three times in the past, I don't know, minute or so that she's been talking. You would not characterize let us pray as a blessing? No. Uh, how would I, you describe it? I look at it, it's, it's a time to, before the proceedings for government work start, it's a time to recognize the seriousness of the proceedings. That's how I look at it. Well, sure, yeah, I mean, we did the same thing here. This is, this is an analogous concept that both, that both of our separate institutions follow. Mm -hmm. we, I get that. That's not the question posed. The question posed is how is this not a blessing? I don't interpret it like that. Would you interpret what we just did as a blessing at the beginning of this thing? Objection. You can answer that question. I, I don't. Okay. How would you describe what we did earlier? I... Having um, a, a moment to come together before a proceeding is started. Okay. Um, having a moment before the proceeding has started is how you describe a blessing. Mm -hmm. And this is, is different than what you're showing on video. Why is it what different? we're doing right now is different than what we're, we're at a deposition. Yeah. This is a city council that is at their regular meeting where they're voting on city matters. So in my opinion, that is different to me. Do you know why we're entitled to require you guys to be here? Objection. Question posed. Yes. Why are we entitled to be here? Be under the, um, the deposition, the 30B6, I believe, is the site. Okay, and why do those rules require you guys to come here? Objection. Matt, you know? she's not going to answer these questions. They have nothing to do with the reason. She's a lawyer. She knows how to yeah, say I'm not a litigator. I, I told you that. 
Okay, so let's start with the basics. Are you familiar with the text of the First Amendment? Objection, Matt. Yes or no? She's not, no, she's not answering questions about, I've given, I think, significant leeway about general background questions, but Christine's not here to talk about her understanding of the law. It has no relation to the topics for which she's been designated. Why is that not literally the subject matter of this dispute? She's not here to testify about the subject matter of this dispute. She's here ah. to testify about the topics for which she has been designated. That was a mistranslation. It was my intended purpose that she would be discussing the topics of this dispute, the subject matter of the dispute. In my opinion, all of these questions go to the ultimate question of fact, which is, did the city discriminate, yes or no? You all posit no, we posit yes. I'm trying to figure out what's going on in between the yes and the no so that we can see if we can at least join minds and understand what we're arguing about. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Your position is, no, we're not here. We are doing literally the least that we can get away with under the rules, correct? I am following the rules. I'm following the rules of what a 30B6 deposition is. And so I'm limiting her testimony to the topics for which she has been designated. And I appreciate that you have a different understanding, but that's my position on the record. I understand that's your on record position. I just want to make sure one more point is abundantly clear. You are not asserting a privilege. You're just telling her not to answer, correct? Correct. Thank you. Uh, you, Nicole O'Connor specifically, are directing this witness specifically not to answer this question, even though you don't have a privilege argument. Correct? I'm, object I'm instructing her not to answer questions outside the scope of her designated topics. And I think I've given significant leeway where appropriate to be reasonable, but I think we're going down avenues that are not productive. Well, I'm asking a yes no question because I'm trying to find a point of impasse. I can only answer the best I can. Well, I asked you a yes no question. You I'm not here to question. answer your questions. Well, then that means we're not at the point of impasse. We, I don't, I don't, we don't, this isn't some sort of proceeding where we need to reach points of impasse. You know my position. She's not answering questions about the legalities of certain things. And if you have a next question, I think now's the time to ask it. I think, that's, I think that's what the misunderstanding is. I'm not asking her legal opinion. I'm literally asking her definitionally. I asked a question that used the word blessing. She's disagreeing with me about the word blessing. This is why I try to avoid semantics games. She said no. I don't see how it's different. I'm asking her to substantiate her no. And her personal opinion as to whether this is a blessing or not is not within the scope of the 30B6. Well, then I'm getting confused about your understanding of 30B6 because her role in your mind seems to dance whether or not you want her to give me the answer. It doesn't. I'm giving some leeway on, she knows a lot about these hearings having sat in them. It's, it's, oh, fine, all right. Um, my client's representative informs me to tell you that Mally, I wanted to have this as a surprise for trial, but since I'm having a spoiled surprise anyway, he literally called it a blessing. All right, do we need to rewind and go rewatch him call it a blessing, or can we get over this blessing and no, pass she, with semantics? She's going to answer the questions how she sees fit. She doesn't answer them to reach the conclusion that you want her to reach. She, in her opinion, said that this wasn't a blessing. Okay, her opinion not only is not relevant to her 30B6 topics, but her opinion is what it is. So. That's ah. her answer to the question. You are here to ask questions, and she is here to give her answers. Whether you like her answers or not is not the question for today. I disagree. That's literally our role here. That's what a deposition is. Let's rewind, let's watch him say blessing, and then let's have you say it's not a blessing. Well, you can ask her, did, did she say it's a blessing? That's a fair question, but whether Christine feels it's a blessing is an entirely different question. Christine's not talking today. The city of Boston is talking through Christine today. We're at a, a fundamental, uh, I agree with that, that she has been designated on certain topics, but whether this constitutes a blessing in Christine's opinion is not a question before these 30B6 topics. I see, okay, so I'm stuck with the 30B6 matters of designation when you don't want me to go outside of that, but I'm also stuck uh, outside of the 30B6 matters of de uh, deposition when I'm talking to Christine. So I'm stuck with her personal knowledge pursuant to her investigation. I'm not allowed to ask the things that I want to know from the person who the city of Boston sent here to talk about the subject matter of this case. If you had issued a subpoena in her personal capacity or in her individual capacity, sure, those questions would be appropriate, uh, perhaps. But she wasn't designated on those topics. So 
maybe the confusion goes like this. City of Boston, I speak to you through this human who stands before me. Let's rewatch your employee call this a blessing first. Uh, rewind, I don't know. Let's just go back to about five. Five-ish. Right before Wu starts talking. A little bit further. More like 4.30. All right, take note, everyone. We're at seven. Uh, a little bit more. That's fine. Let's, let's just start here. At 4.30 or 4.07? 4.07 is fine. Okay. okay. Let us resume. Mark's uh, introducing the uh, uh, member of the clergy, uh, which he's uh, presenting to uh, to uh, bless this body as we begin our meeting. Pause. Councilor Wu. Did anyone else in the room take notice how he emphasized the word bless? I did. Did you, City of Boston, notice that your employee emphasized the word bless? I just heard him say that, yes. I see. And City of Boston, would you also agree that this, in fact, is a blessing? Objection. Yes or no? No, her a personal opinion is irrelevant. I'm not talking to Christine. I'm talking to the City of Boston that hovers over her. But city she of is Boston. not designated on those topics. And Matt, this is not productive. So if you want to seek leave of court to perhaps put some parameters on what our understanding of what this deposition is, you know my position, I know your position, we don't have the same position. So continuing to go down this road is neither productive, helpful, or a productive use of anyone's time. I agree. So you've got my objection on mm -hmm. the record. If you would like to, to revisit that in court, you are certainly welcome to do so, but the next question, please. Thank you. City of Boston, uh, is this in fact a blessing? Objection. So if we are going to continue to do this, I'm, more, I'm telling you that we're going to leave. I'm confused. I'm asking a different question from my prior one that you just objected to. Is there something that I'm misunderstanding about Ask your Ask your question again. Let me hear it. City of Boston, do you bless your meetings? That's a fair question. Yes or no? No. You do not. Okay. Let us continue. Uh, back at seven, though. Seven. Seven minutes. Ah, uh, six fifty-seven. That's uh, fine. Whatever. Seven. I'm sure she's saying nothing of importance. That's good. Six forty-nine. That's good too. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for these your servants that have answered the call to serve the city of Boston. Thank you for this you need time that you have blessed us with and you have endowed us with the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding oh god to know what to do so today as i pray for each member of the boston city council i ask you like the men of Essekar of old that you will give these women and men understanding understanding of the different neighborhoods understanding of the unique culture of boston understanding of the the, the problems that we face and the problems Pardon. that they here. Need. Uh, in the past 45 seconds, I've heard her call the counselors uh, your servants, servants. She's called this a blessing, and she has requested that God literally endow his servants with knowledge. Have you heard all those things, or do we need to rewatch the last 45 seconds? I heard it. Okay, uh, please continue. Father God, to work through understanding in the best course to take, the best decision to make for each Lord community. I pray today that as they deliberate the business of today, that you will endow them with the wisdom, the knowledge that they need to make the right decision. Holy Spirit, we Pause. invite you. Uh, where are we at? 8.09 in the past, call it 35 seconds, I've heard this person with an emphatically impassionate voice describe this current speech as a prayer. She has once again recited that the counselors require God's wisdom and knowledge to do their basic governmental tasks. Um, and I, I believe I, I remember somewhere in here I w heard the word need, so I just want to emphasize that the word need is in here. They need God to do their job. Is that correct? 
from the city of Boston's perspective, is it correct that the government needs God to do its job? Objection. Yes or no? Not you are not answering that question. I am not on the advice of counsel. Okay, and once again, on advice of counsel, you're not answering it even though there is no privilege, correct? Yes, it's not within the you. scope of the 30B6 topic, okay. correct. Continuing forward. Oh, to give them the wisdom that they do not possess within themselves, that as they trust you, as they allow you to lead them, that they, Father God, will be confident in the course that they will take. I ask you that you will watch over each person and their families. We pray Pause. that you will come. Uh, why is the government inviting someone to bless the counselor's families? Objection. It happened. We see that it just happened. Why is the government doing that? Objection. So that's again not a topic that's designated on the 30B6 subpoena. Do I really need to go read through my 30B6 to go find something that sounds a lot like I want to inquire as to why you guys have this policy? Because I can do that. We can do it off the record too, if y'all don't mind. Why you have the policy of what? Having this person come up here, deliver an impassioned plea to God that the servants, which is to say our public employees, uh, be endowed with knowledge and wisdom that they otherwise lack. Why is that a thing? I can look through the 30B6 depot, or you guys can answer the question, well, which is your preference? Why don't you explain to me where you see that in the 30B6 depositions? If you Let's know. take a break. I will go find it and highlight very many instances in which I can do that. Great. Okay, the time is 12.17. We're off the record. We are back on the record. The time is 12.17. Okay. Uh, taking note of the 30B6 notice, paragraph 3 states as follows. A background on the city's invocation policy ceremony, or invocation ceremony, including without limitation, when it first arose, we've covered that, what legal challenges, if any, it has faced over time. Very interested in hearing about that. Uh, how, if at all, the invocation ceremony has changed over time. Sounds like the answer is not. Uh, how, if at all, any policies, practices, or customs surrounding the ceremony has changed over time? Uh, uh, employee, what has it changed over time to the best of your knowledge, or has it pretty much been the same? It's been the same. Okay. Uh, the bases for limiting who may participate. Why won't you invite TST? What is your basis or plural bases? So she can't answer specifically as to TNT, but she can answer in general why. Sorry, to interject, it's the Satanic Temple, not TNT, TST. I apologize Thank if you. I misspoke. Please continue. She can answer as to the basis for why any entity is, or why any entity is limited from participating. Where in paragraph three, which states a, a background on the city's invocation policy ceremony, suggesting to you that I'm asking about other people's ceremonies, which is not the subject matter of this dispute. To me, this reads as a general, you wanna know the general background on the city's invocation ceremony process and who is invited to participate and who isn't. You just said the city. Who is the city in this context? I am not asking, answering your questions, Matt. I don't, well, then she will I answer my I'm, question. I'm fundamentally confused. I'm really not trying to be difficult. I think this is all really straightforward. I would really love for her to answer the questions. Okay, let's she recap. Can, she can certainly answer how the city determines who may or may not participate no, in the invocation I process. No, I designated the bases for the city to limit who may participate in the city's invocation ceremony. That's part of paragraph three. You're not gonna get away with that one. No one's getting away with that one. No one's trying to get away with anything. I'm okay. trying to be clear about what your the position is during your the position has been made adequately clear. Let's restate the question. City of Boston, who brought this human here to talk about this very subject matter pursuant to a 30B6 deposition, in which I stated that I want to know the bases for you, City of Boston, to limit who may participate, I demand that you tell me now so, okay. where are your bases. You, we have to give respect to the witness, and I appreciate that you're very excited about this topic, but she can certainly answer how invocation speakers are selected and when they may or may not participate. That's a fair question that you just asked, but I'm asking that you 
please show some respect to the witness and you don't need to issue demands. She is more than happy to answer your question. This is a legal demand. Y'all are not here of your own accord. You are here because I demanded, pursuant to a complaint, that you come here. You acquiesced. You brought this one. This one is to speak to the bases for limiting who may participate. So that this, one is telling me that this one will not please, answer. Please, this is Christine O'Donnell. I'm Nicole O'Connor. You can call me Nicole, but you can't refer to me as this one. I'm really uncomfortable with the way that this deposition is unfolding. Fine. I'm really trying to have our witness answer your questions, but we can't do it disrespectfully. Then I need a break. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, the time is 12.21, we're off the record. Okay, we are back on the record. The time is 12.31. Okay, um, off the record, I apologize for my errant ways. Once again, looking you in both in the eyes, I apologize sincerely, sincerely, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. um, the subject of dispute is basically I'm coloring outside the lines of my 30B6 notice. So that being the case, uh, specifically with regard to, quote, the bases for limiting who may participate, end quote, which is more particularly included with the term, a quote, a background on the city's invocation ceremony, end quote, my question to you is whether there are bases for limiting who may participate, yes or no? It's by invitation. So the limit would be if you don't get an invitation, you don't give the invocation. Uh, so the answer is yes, and the basis is singular, which is you were not invited. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. And as I recall, earlier you said you investigated why, how and why a particular speaker is selected in the course of preparing for this deposition. Is that correct? I didn't investigate how or why. A spe oh, well, if you're, if you're asking, I asked um, staffers of city councilors how a counselor determines who they invite. Is that what you're asking? That is what I'm trying to yes. ask. Nicole, may I rephrase it as I see fit, or am I bound sure. to the language? Yep. Basically, what I'm trying to get at here is pursuant to your earlier conversation here, you, like you got here. Before you got here, yes. you did an investigation. That investigation included talking to people. Did yes. you talk to the people for your investigation uh, why a particular matter or why a particular speaker is selected or any permutation in your mind thereof? I asked how a counselor determines who they're going to invite for the invocation. Okay, pause there. And why? Did you ask why? Yes or no? I did not because that answer was part of the answer that the staff person gave me. So the st I tasked you with giving me how and why a particular speaker is selected. You went out, you found how, you did not investigate why. Is that correct? The Objection. The answer. The response from the staff persons that I asked said, oh, it's someone that the counselor has a personal relationship with or does work within our district or has done work with our constituents. Okay, and... So that would be the why. That would be why a uh, well, counselor extends an invitation to somebody. Y yes, yes, thank you. Um, that sounded like a quote. Were you given a quote or is this just you referencing your prior statement? It's not a quote. It's me summarizing the question that I asked the staffers. Okay, so you had some kind of a dialogue with staffers. Yes. Minimally, you asked a question. Did you get one statement or more than one statement in return? I, I asked more than one staffer, so yes, more than one statement. Did you ask each staffer? Let's, let's do it like this. How did you ask each staffer this question? I asked, what does, how, how does the counselor determine who to invite for the invocation? In what the form? Question. What, yeah, yeah. Uh, what form was this inquiry made? Was it spoken, written, or something spoken. else? Spoken. Okay, so you met with them in person, or did you talk to them on the phone, or was this some other means of? It was in person. Okay, when was this meeting? It wasn't a meeting, it was just a conversation, um, probably about two weeks ago. Okay, um, so give or take two weeks ago, how many, well, was this a, did you guys all meet in one place, 
Because you mentioned you talked to multiple staff, plural staff people. Talked to a couple of people. Okay. Um, who were the two people that you talked to? Amanda Curley. Oops. C, uh, how do I spell Curly? Um, C-U-R-L-E-Y. E-Y, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and just for sake of good notes, A-N-D-A. -A. Okay, so you talked to um, Amanda. Who else did you? Sophia Wang. Sophia Wang. Okay, who is Amanda Curley in the organization? Amanda Curley is the Chief of Staff for Counselor Baker. Chief Staff Baker. Uh, K-E-R? Yes. Okay. Sophia Wang is? She is the Policy Director for Counselor Flynn. C Director for F-L-Y-N. And it's the city's position that the councilors may, and basically the councilors have, you know, whatever it is that they do, that's up to them. Uh, that's pretty much the custom, is that correct? In yes. terms of extending invites, each, each person does whatever they feel like, is essentially. Yes. Okay. Um, you talked to two, by my count, councilors for a time period, an agreed time period, discoverable scope of uh, 2011 until minimally the date of the complaint, um, although that's subject of dispute as well. Um, how, how many counselors have been, you know, employed by the city during that time frame? So there has been a lot of turnover. Yeah. The city council has, their election is every two years. It's a two-year term. So since I started in 2011, there actually... All of the counselors are gone since I first started in 2011. Oh. It's all new counselors right now. Okay. So part of the reason why I reached out to those two counselors' offices, um, Counselor Baker started in 2012, 2013. Okay. And although Counselor Flynn is a newer counselor, I believe his first term was... 20, 2018, I think, but he is the council president, so mm -hmm. that is my reasoning for speaking to those two offices. So he's the council president? Councilor Flynn is the council president, yes, okay. the council, council president. So Flynn is currently the, count, currently the council president, yes. correct? When did he first become council president? This, uh, this year. Oh, wow, okay. Yes. Council Prez, all right. Uh, you gave me beginning dates for both Baker and Flynn. Are they yeah, still? Uh, approximately. Well, yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah, uh, everything's approximate. I'm not playing semantics games here. Give or take 2012, that's what the squiggly line means for, for my purposes. Mm -hmm. um, are they still counselors, though? Yes. Okay. Present and present. Okay, so you talked to Flynn to determine how... Flynn does things, but you did not talk to anyone else, it seems, or other than Baker. No. Okay. All right. Turning once again back to here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, all right. Why didn't you talk to anyone other than Flynn's people? Well, I talked to Councillor Baker's oh, yes. people because, again, he's been there the longest now, mm -hmm. and Councillor Flynn because he's the council president. Oh. So and you... I, as I said previously, I've attended the meeting, so I can see from the introduction, and I know that the policy is based on invitation, and that's why I'm here to discuss that policy. So I spoke to those two offices just to get an idea how their counselors pick the individual that gives the invocation. You, you specify how, but I also charged you with specifying why. 
And again, I feel that I answered that. It's individuals that the counselors have a relationship with, and the counsel, it's by invitation. Well, uh, sorry, I was... I, in- I, I feel that the counselors are the only ones that can speak to why they're asking somebody. I, I can infer, based on the invites, that it's people that they know because of a personal relationship or work they do within the city. Yes, but that's an inference, and as their employer who has charged them to do certain tasks for your business purposes, um, that, I posit, is a material aspect of the agency, seeing as how you, 30B6 witness, are unable or unwilling to testify to that effect. Would you agree, then, that I need to talk to the individual counselors, each? Yes. Okay. In order to, uh, to, to be more at, uh, to make a better record, um, I heard yes, I interpreted that to mean yes for the particular purpose of why are they not inviting TST, why are they inviting these other people. For example, I need to talk to Wu about this particular person and why Wu in particular would not invite TST, correct? Wu didn't invite TST, there was never an invite. I understand the why question is addressed to Wu though, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, Uh, who would I talk to in Wu's office or on Wu's behalf in order to get her deposition set up because we only have like two months left in discovery? Objection, I mean, I'm happy to coordinate Okay. sort of information. I don't think Christine will know it. You can ask her. You don't gotta call an objection, you can just. Okay. Okay, all right. I I bring that up because words like objection have a tendency to to get me riled up. I'm trying to to keep it down. It's just pretty standard. Okay. All right, and I also see on my handy list here, paragraph four, city's record keeping policies surrounding payment to guest speakers at the invocation policy, which presupposes that this person uh, who is presently blessing the proceedings, although that's subject to dispute, uh, Wu invited this priest and this priest is paid by the city for speaking at this event, is that correct? The people that give the invocation are no longer paid no longer paid. When did that stop? I believe it stopped in 2016 or 2017. I'm not sure of the actual year. How do you know that they stopped being paid? Because, uh, again, I was, I was in my same job and the staff director at the time informed us that the clergy weren't being paid anymore. 2016 or 2017? Uh, that was the time frame that people stopped getting paid, is that correct? Yes, that was when now Mayor Wu was council president. Mm-hmm. Um, that coincides with TST's first request to TST, uh, to, to demand basically an invitation, is that correct? Yes. Was it because of TST's demand? It was looked at and considered best practice to stop the stipend. I understand, but did the process of looking at the process of whether we are giving money to these priests, uh, was that occasioned by TST's demand for invite? Yes, the policy was looked at then. Okay, um, so just to, make, just to make a cohesive sentence, um, in 2016, TST demanded an invite of the city uh, council City Council goes to you requesting a legal opinion as to whether they have to. Is there they, any wrong they, I was support? not involved in that decision whether or not to stop the payment. I was not involved in it. Ah, I was mistaken. I'm so sorry. So TST demanded an invite in 2016. I was confused as to which one you opined as to the city doesn't have to extend an invite. That was 2018. Yes. So there have been at least two demands for invitation. Do you know how many times TST has demanded, legally demanded, an invite? I do not. Okay. Um, If I told you it's at least three, does that sound like something you can disprove Um, as we sit here today? No, that seems reasonable. I don't... Okay. Again, I'm not aware how many times. Okay. Uh, That's that's fine. I don't really care about the number anyway. So TST first issues a demand in 2016, which prompts a process of reviewing its prayer policy uh, to avoid a subject lawsuit not unlike this one um, because of TST's legal demand and it seems 
from my perspective at least, and I'm curious as to your position on the matter, it seems like it was for the purpose of either avoiding or winning a lawsuit, not unlike this one. Objection. City of Boston, do I need to have your employees speak to this matter? Objection, you can answer if you can. I object I, to this if you can business. She, can, she knows that she can answer my questions if she can. Um, can you repeat your question? Was the purpose of reviewing the, the determination to pay these priests part of a purpose of avoiding liability, thereby avoiding a court order requiring TST to have an invitation? Is that why you guys did your, your review? Objection. The, re the review was done, and again, I did not conduct this review, but the review of the policy of paying the people given the invocation was looked at, and it was determined that it was best practice to stop the stipend. Okay. And City of Boston, was it... Um, is it your testimony as we sit here today that since approximately 2016, let's book into 2018, um, people have not been getting paid since at least going back to 2018-ish? Correct, and I'm, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was 2017. So I'm pretty sure you can settle on, on that, that it was okay. 2017 was when the payment stopped. Okay, um, who made that decision? Um, at the time, it was um, Council President Wu. Oh, so Councilor Wu here, who invited this particular person, I should probably ask her why she decided to turn off this uh, money thing. Yes. Okay, let us proceed. Uh, oh, sorry. It's hard to use a uh, laptop mouse, guys, bear with us. For them in their going out, in their coming in, I pray that you watch over their children, watch over their household, and we pray especially for the city of Boston as they, Father God, lead and deliberate today that every step they take, every agenda item, you will be involved. For they, Lord Father, will have ears to hear what you are saying. Give them ears to hear what the community uh -oh. saying, give them eyes to see even beyond the physical. Give them vision, we pray, not just for today, but for the years ahead. So I ask you that you will grant the peace that passes all understanding, that will guard their hearts in Christ Jesus. They will not lean on their own understanding, but in all their ways, in all their doing, in all their discussion, they will acknowledge you and allow you to direct their path. We thank you for hearing us now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen and amen. Amen. All right, uh, pause please. All right, so going back to uh, this matter, I have a lot of follow-up questions about this. I feel like you're not the right person for me to talk to. Should I talk to Michelle Wu about this? Probably depends on the question. Oh, do we want to go through that? Okay, uh, that felt a lot like proselytizing to me. What say you, City of Boston? So, yes, objection. That is not a question that Christine can answer. Okay. The 30 v 6 topics. I can, I can go through the list or that's not. basically the topic. Okay, all right. Now, uh, I feel like this is a good time for lunch unless the witness would like to proceed. It's totally up to Christine. It is entirely up to you, Christine. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm fine with... You can break wait. now, you can, take, you can go for another half hour if you wanted, you could, whatever you want to do. Yeah, the, um, the next phase of things will be public input uh, to counselors. It's probably going to run into another impasse. Suffice it to say, we're just going to look at them. I'm not going to get too detailed on it. Um, I feel like I have a lot of why questions that are really better addressed to Wu, so I'm just gonna leave those for her. Um, how about we just take a look at the emails and then call it a day? Sure, okay. Sound good? Sure. All right, um, let's just drop this 
uh, drop this YouTube thing. We now have some emails that we've received through Discovery. To recap, Christine, you looked at the Discovery, um, correct? Yes. Okay. And more particularly, I apologize, Discovery is a legal jargon term. Could you please explain to the, the congregants what it means to have Discovery? Objection, you can answer. Um, my understanding is that it's requests for information and documents uh, before litigation or it, during litigation. Is it Again, I'm not a litigator, so I'm not familiar with the proper terms. That's okay. If I, if I dispute any part of what you have to say to me, I ask further examining questions until we get to the place where I feel like we're either at an impasse or I understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, so if I could rephrase it in my own words, is it fair to say that discovery is a means by which you prepare for trial that the rules allow you to have? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So pursuant to that, we sent discovery requests, the details of which are irrelevant. Uh, because of the discovery request, you guys gave us documents. These are some of the documents. Uh, you will take note uh, that this particular item uh, is designated as Defendants 2870, Bates Stamp 2870. If we could please open it up. And then let's scroll down to the very bottom so that we can see, in fact, this is Defendants 0002870. This is 2870. Um, <clears throat> there and then on, uh, well, sorry, August 30, 2017, uh, Mark Thomas states to, uh, is it, would you describe this list of email addresses as the city council? Yes, at that time, those are all of the councilors, and I believe the current mayor, Martin Walsh, is on that email as well. Okay. Um, the subject line states Satanic City Council Meetings. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and there and then, Mark Tom, uh, first of all, before we get into the text of the email, is this pretty normal to see, you know, we talked about members of the public communicating to their counselors. Is this pretty much what that looks like? The, honestly, the city council doesn't really get many requests for the invocation. Usually oh. communications from the public relate to legislation if um, there's issues in the community, yeah. things like that. Okay, so. Um, if but I, it's a but. But if you're asking about means of communication, yeah. that would be a means to communicate with the counselors via email. I was literally just asking as to form. This okay. appears normal, in other words. Is that is that fair, or is this abnormal that someone would send an email to the whole city council? No, that would that's normal. Okay, um, as stated there and then, Mark Thomas. Uh, states, Dear Councilors, it has come to my attention that a proposal is being circulated to open City Council meetings with a quote-unquote prayer from an alleged Satanist. Uh, it isn't clear to, if it isn't clear to every City Councilor and Mayor Martin Walsh, that would be a very bad idea and cross far over any bounds of sanity and decency. Moreover, as an act of hate, blasphemy, and rejection of God, it should be immediately commended as just that. I trust that this is all that needs to be said on the matter. Uh, it is a very frightening matter to incur the wrath of God for either yourselves or the city of Boston. Respectfully, Mark Thomas dash Boston. Uh, did I read that email in full correctly? Yes. Okay, and then I see from Andrea Campbell to Christine O'Donnell. Uh, first of all, you're Christine O'Donnell. You're the two, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and Andrea Campbell is the then council president. Uh, no, no, actually. Yep. She... Uh, no, no, no. She was the uh, um, a district councilor at that time. Okay, and to reiterate, that time being August 30, 2017, mm -hmm. was the original email. The secondary email being, or the responsive email, whatever this is, maybe forward. Is this a forward? You tell me. It is a forward because, as you can see, the August 30th email I was not on. Mm -hmm. And then from the text ah. of the email on September 1st, it looks as if um, I was forwarded that email because it was a public records request. I see. Um, I also now take note, uh, this would have probably made things a lot easier. Above Mark Thomas, it literally says forwarded message. So we know now that it was forwarded oh. to you. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, so going back, September 1, 2017, Andrea says to you, Christine O'Donnell, hi, Christine, I'm checking on the counselor's email during her leave and will send you all emails related to this request now. Um, you received this email. I did not receive any other responsive documentation about this. Who is the counselor, uh, to your understanding, from Andrea Campbell? That Ellie is, was Counselor Campbell's chief of staff at the time. So she's telling me that she's reviewing the counselor's emails. Okay. Oh, we laid, I see. This was a subject to a public right. And looking at the context in the sense that that was forwarded to me. Okay. It, look, it appears to me that this was a subject to a public records request. And that's why Ellie, who mm. was Counselor Campbell's chief of staff, is forwarding this to me. I see now also this email is, sub well, no. How do you know this is a public records request? Based on my job for the past 11 years, it says I'm checking the counselor's email during her leave and will send you all me emails related to this request now. Oh. When I get a public records request, I work with the city's records access officer and um, I also reach out to all the counselors and say, do you have any emails documents responsive to this request. There must have been a request. I don't know if it was from TST or if it was from any, any member of the public can request sure. records. Emails, unless they're privileged, are subject to public records. Any document is subject to a public record unless a statutory exemption applies. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the language from Ellie to me that someone requested a public record. Okay. And this, this was subject to that public record. Again, I'm okay. just looking at it in the one page, but yeah. that's what it looks like to me. Well, that makes sense because, you know, we have August 30, I'm yes. checking so-and-so's. I didn't see this Eli. I saw the Andrea Campbell. Um, so that, that all makes sense, especially with this, this request now, this request being the public records request. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next exhibit. Uh, this is, uh, for benefit of the record, we're going to call this Bates. Actually, do you guys even need the... The, the records anymore or the PDFs? Madam Court Reporter, do we need to give you PDFs? Do I need to designate these as exhibits one through et cetera, or can I just call this Bates number, whatever? Um, do you want them marked? Would you want them marked as an exhibit and then attached? Mm, uh, yes, yeah, they will be marked as an exhibit. Do I need to designate it as an exhibit? Well, okay. it's just easier that unless you send them to me that way already marked, however you want to do it. So okay. I just need to know. You got it. Way. Okay, I'll just make note of which ones we're addressing in which orders. Yeah, in the okay. base numbers, if you want to put that on for, I'll include it in the uh, exhibits you. page just as a reference for everyone. Thank you. Um, all right, so we've called, if we could scroll back down, I've already forgotten the base number. Here we are, 2870. And this is... Um, I'm gonna call this the frightening email. Okay, uh, let's just tab on to the number next one, whatever we're gonna call it. Uh, I see this is defendants. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, I gotta see the, yeah, I gotta see the base numbers. 34, 34, uh, sc scroll all the way to the bottom because it's a page range. 3436. Does anyone object to me disregarding? We just saw, if we could scroll down one more time, for benefit of the record, we're looking at 3434 through 3436. Pages 3435 and 3436 are just a bunch of signatures. Does anyone object to me disregarding 3435 and 3436 in the presentation of the argument at trial? No. Okay. So I'm going to strike. Those remaining two. Uh, now, we're looking now at 3434, which subsequently is going to just be a one page. Um, this is appearing, appearing to be an email dated October 19, 2020, from someone named P. Kuman to Gabrielle Coletta, or sorry, Gabriella Coletta. And um, I'm afraid my eyes have failed me. Uh, Madam Witness, could you please? To the, to the best of your ability, I imagine you can probably decipher these people's names and whatnot better than I can. Yep. From, well, on date, 
from who to who, CC who, subject what? Um, date, Monday, October 19th, 2020, from P. Cumin to Gabriella Coletta, oh, I skipped subject, regarding okay. providing virtual invocation to city council meeting to Gabriella Coletta, CC Teresa Melionic. Okay, so I, I note the two has a boston.gov email address. Who is this Gabriella Coletta? At that time, she was chief of staff for Councillor Lydia Edwards. Uh, a chief of staff's, uh, oh, here we are, Councillor Edwards, so yep. that's great. Um, P. Kuman appears to be, I see at the signature, some kind of a priest, so um, why, don't you, why don't you read us this, uh, this, this email, Madam, Madam Witness. Hi, Gabriella. Thank you for your email. I'm honored to accept Councilor Edwards' invitation to provide the opening invocation for the City Council this coming Wednesday, but I have a practical question to ask to make sure that there's something feasible for me. I have a Mass at 12.10 p.m. on Wednesday. Do you think the City Council will start at 12 p.m. sharp? I'm just asking because I could stay on the call until 12.05, but then I'll have to leave and get ready for Mass. Do you think it would be feasible for me to give the invocation and then leave the call to get ready for my Mass? Please let me know what Councilor Edwards thinks. Thank you for your help. Take care. Father Parlo. Paulo. Okay, so I see here that, uh, I think it's Friar is uh, FR. Um, is it Father or Friar? No, it's Father. I'm so That's sorry. That's my experience. I don't know. Could uh, be Friar. I don't I, know. I apologize. I have difficulty with language, so it's um, if it's an abbreviation, then I just assume it's the shortest one that it could be. So Father Paulo, um, are you personally familiar with Father Paulo? No. Okay. Are you personally familiar with whatever SanCarlo.org is? I am not. Okay. Uh, let's scroll down. Maybe this will give us some more uh, insight. Uh, so this is in res this prior email I see is in response to an email dated when, by whom, to, et cetera. Please, please explain to the people. Do you want me to read the email? Oh, no, literally say uh, we have to do some minimal legal required stuff. We have to get background on what is it that we're looking at. So for people who are not literally looking at this document, they're going to be seeing a court transcript of everything that's going on here. It's so for an email on October 19th, 2020 at 7.51 a.m. Gabriella Coletta wrote, Good morning, Father Paulo. I'm reaching out on behalf of Boston City Councilor Leah Edwards to ask if you'd be willing to provide the opening invocation for this week's virtual Boston City Council hearing on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Okay. We'd be honored to have you represent our district for this hearing. Kindly let me know when you can. Best, Gabriella. Okay, so I see now the relevance of this document appears to be that uh, Councillor Lydia Edwards invited Father Paulo. Um, I probably need to figure out who or why, rather, Father Paulo was uh, invited, which is outside your, your knowledge scope. So. We're going to set that aside. We're calling this the Father Paolo Invite. Uh, how do I spell that? P-A-O-L-O. -O. Invitation. All right. Um, and for benefit of a more clear record, Exhibit 1 was 2870, frightening email, quote unquote. Exhibit 2 is Bates 3434. I'm calling it the Father Paolo Invitation. Um, no need for email. Uh, now let's move on to number next one. Okay, um, Madam Witness, if you could. Uh, earlier you said I skipped over subject. That's actually, it, it makes more sense to know who's talking with whom, when, and about what. So if you could say the from to CC, uh, when, and then about, and then we'll, we'll figure out together what this is all about. From Gabriella Coletta, sent Tuesday, February 19th, 2019, to Carl, Carl Jean Louis, CC, Candace Morales, P Michaela Parkin, Elizabeth oh, Pim uh, you can You can just summarize, just a bunch of people at Boston. Okay, okay. Sent um, CC to um, uh, Boston employees, subject regarding agenda for tomorrow's planning meeting. Okay, all I see is a C of boston.gov emails and I see also a Gmail in here. Do you have any idea who any of these people are? I do, some. 
Okay. Not all. I, I don't care about the ones you don't know. Tell me about who you do know. So Candace Morales is one of my colleagues on Central Staff. She is the communications person for the City Council. Michaela Parkin used to work for former Councilor Janey. She is no longer employed at City Council. Elizabeth Pimitel used to be Councilor Campbell's Chief of Staff. Mark, Mer I don't know, uh, Ulady Valdez used to be the Staff Director for City Council. And Kristen Halbert used to be a staffer for Councilor Michelle Wu. Basically a bunch of support staff for Councilors, is that fair to say? Yes. Okay, uh, let's scroll down, see what our Bates stamp is. Uh, Bates numbering, that is to say. Uh, I just need to know the first page and then the last page. 2320, beginning and ending when? 2322. Okay, what is this all about? Uh, this appears to be some kind of meeting notes. Uh, is is that fair to say? BHM stands for Black History Month. Okay. That's an event that the City Council has. Okay. What is CJ? What, who is CJ? CJ we'll um, works for Councilor Campbell. Okay. We'll check with staff from President's office. Do these words mean anything to you? Um, it looks like, based on the agenda, that um, he's looking to the council president's office for guidance, but... Okay. Uh, what is UMB? I, I do not know. Okay. Um, all right. Well, it seems to me... Let's scroll down uh, so I can just kind of skim through this. UMB is sometimes refers to UMass Boston, but in this ah. context, I don't know if that's what that means. Oh, you know what? Um, I am vaguely familiar that some of these documents appear to suggest that there's like last minute needs for invocations. Uh, maybe I could summarize all this by asking you just directly, how was it ever the case that there's like a last minute need, we need an invocation for whatever meeting? Is that a thing that happens at the city? Yes. Okay, how often does that happen? It happens, um, I can't give an approximate amount, but um, maybe a, a couple of times a year, a few times a year, About five, two. five okay. times a year. But not, not often in the overall five amount times. of meetings. Okay, so about two to five times per year, there's an opening for invocations that requires someone to need to fill. And uh, obviously we all know that TST was not invited. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, let's move on to the next document. No, 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 we don't, we're done with this one. Uh, for, for benefit of a clean record, this was Exhibit 3, Bates Range 2320 to 2322. I'll figure out a designation later. We can, we can move on to the next video. Uh, let's see here. Okay, uh, let's just scroll down uh, to, the, to the Bates number. Uh, it'll be at the bottom of the page. Okay, 23, well, actually, if, What's going to be four is beginning 2391 to 2392. <sighs> this appears to me to be another instance in which, another discrete instance, provable instance in which um, someone needed a last minute invite. Is, is that consistent with your reading of this email? Do you need me to read it aloud? Nope. looks as if it's last minute since it's tomorrow, but it also yeah. looks as if they found someone. Okay, um, last minute, that's, that brings a good point. Last minute isn't discrete terminology. Um, does the city of Boston have uh, a meaning for last minute or is it just using its common parlance? Using its common parlance. Okay, last minute as used in common tongue. Actually, Ed, um, after looking at this again, 
I cannot confirm whether or not it was last minute because oh. Michaela Parkin worked for at the time it was council president Janey and since the council president chairs the council meeting it looks as if Michaela is emailing Ellie since it was Councillor Campbell's turn to see who was giving the invocation so I'm not sure Michaela sent it on Monday the meetings on Wednesday I'm not sure if when Councillor Campbell reached out to Pastor Jansen, it looks like. So, so other, I don't want to be inaccurate and say that Councillor Campbell waited till the last minute when I'm not clear on that based on the email. Okay, I, I don't mean to be contentious, but I see Michaela here ends the, the email, or the second to last sentence of uh, the Monday, November 2 at 1.01 p.m. Michaela writes, uh, please let me know if you can find someone by end of day tomorrow, exclamation mark. And Michaela likely sent that because the staffers of whoever the, whoever the council president is mm -hmm. generally prepare prep notes for mm -hmm. the council president. So Michaela, and like I said, our meetings are on Wednesday, Michaela likely sent Ellie that email so she could include the name of the individual giving the invocation in Council President Janey's script. I see. Um, what What is the usual uh, advance notice that the city receives that it will have a particular person giving a particular, uh, uh, I'm gonna call it a blessing. I know that's a subject of dispute. I'm just gonna keep calling it a blessing. Um, how, you got this person who's gonna be doing a blessing how long before the meeting do you know they're going to be doing the blessing? Do I know or does the, the, the I, city, the individual counselor, I, they may reach out to them well ahead in advance. Whoever mm -hmm. is, is inviting someone that I can't speak to. S sorry. Uh, I, I, again, I, I hate the theatrics about it, but technically I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the city of Boston. So it would vary yeah. on counselors depending yeah. how much notice. They would give. So I'd probably need to talk to them, huh? Yes. Okay. All right. So how much advance notice notice do counselors get? Oops. And now that's that's in terms of what the counselors receive. What about for purposes of um, you know, putting together an agenda. Presumably an agenda gets put together for these meetings. Is that fair to say? Yes, that's correct. When does that get locked in? The agenda has to come out the Monday before the Wednesday meeting. Monday before the Wednesday meeting? Yes. Okay, so uh, returning back to our email then, this is Monday at 101. She's freaking out because it's, it's due tomorrow and she probably needs to have the agenda done. This email does not refer to the agenda. Uh, Michaela is asking her for the name so mm -hmm. she can put it in the script that she prepares for Councillor Janey's notes. Michaela was a staff person for Councillor Janey, okay. who was president at the time, council president at the time. As president, they, the president chairs the city council meetings, so she, whoever the council president is, opens the meetings and has a script and likely says, oh, I now invite so-and-so who has um, I, I invite Councillor, so in this case, Councillor Campbell up, who has invited Pastor James W.S. Mm -hmm. Jansen to come to speak. So this looks like to me that Michaela is reaching out to Ellie so she can have the name to put in the script because Councillor Janey liked to look at the script the night before the council meeting. Okay. Um, so this is not the agenda. I know. This is not the agenda. I understand. I'm saying that she needs it for the purposes of the agenda, possibly, or actually more likely, it Ooh. seems, because I see November at 3 p.m. If the things, if the meeting is actually on Wednesday, um, you know, it, it's it, it seems to me that they're just looking to fill the slot. I disagree with that okay. characterization. Okay. Well, that's an impasse. Let's move on. Um, and for benefit of the record, this is 2391 to 2392. Uh, I'll figure out a designation later. Let's move on to number next one. Oops.
Uh, oh, thank you. 2733 to 2734. Let's see the top of 34. What? Oh, uh, yeah, those are just signatures. So we're just going to do 2733. Unless, unless opposing counsel, do you object to me only use? As a, as a general proposition, can I just skip signatures? Please. Yeah. OK. Less paper, I prefer. Uh, let's scroll up slightly more. What is going on here? So these are a lot of emails. Uh, let's start with the bottom most. Uh, we are looking at an email. And sorry, I'm just going to take over this. I think it's going to be a little bit more efficient. We see June 10, 2020 at 8.33 AM. Michael Bonetti writes uh, <laughs> to someone named uh, Madam Witness. Could you please state uh, the, the you pronunciation? Lady. You lady. Thank you. Um, please, please carry away with the body of the text. We have a priest to preside over the invocation today. His name is Father Michael Della Pena, OFM, pastor of St. Leonard of Port Maurice Parish in the North End. Thanks, Michael. Okay, uh, does the uh, shorthand OFM mean anything to you? It does not. Okay, uh, I see that the it follows uh, a, a priest's, uh, you're gonna have to forgive me, I really apologize, I don't, I don't speak the, the uh, jargon of the Catholic tongue. Is this Father Michael Della Pena? Is, is that correct? And OFM, uh, OFM pastor. It seems to be like a, a priest, some kind of um, honorary suffix. I, that, do, I don't know I see. What, the, what that is. Okay, but. I don't know what that reference is. Okay. Um, and he's a pastor of somewhere in the North End, which I presume from context that this is a neighborhood or a smaller subpart of the city of Boston. Is yes, that correct? it's a neighborhood okay. of the city. Okay, so we see that once again happened at Wednesday at 8.33 a.m. Uh, and as we've been over multiple times, the meetings are on Wednesday. So this appears to be what I would call a last minute email example. Again, you, you are taking this out of context. You lady was the staff director. Michael is a staffer for Senator excuse me, for Councillor Edwards. You, he is letting you lady know who is giving the invocation. This was also during when we were on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So we were having staffers coordinate who was going to be let in to as a, as, a pa as a panelist. So Michael is letting you lady know that this person is given the invocation. It doesn't necessarily mean it was last minute. It's just that this is the day of the meeting. So mm -hmm. Michael is letting you lady know. Okay, so. So it's, I do not think that we can say that it's last minute. Well, not on the strength of this email alone. I'd probably need to go talk to someone. So is you lady still at the uh, city? Not with the city council. Is she anywhere in the city? Yes. Okay, what does she do with the city? Or, sorry, I'm assuming genders. What is the preferred gender num? Uh, I believe she prefers she, her. Okay. Um, I am not sure of her exact title. I know she's in the property management division. Do you know your lady's last name? Yes. What's Valdez, V-A-L-D-E-Z. Okay. Um, okay, and who is this Michael Benetti? I see a long string of text, but... Um, Michael Benetti um, used to work for Councillor Edwards. Okay, so he is a staff member of Edwards. Yes. Okay, let's scroll up to see slowly to see if we can see if there's anything of any recognizable relevance. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, on Wednesday, June 10, uh, you lady... Well, now I'm confused. Would you forward the link to him? Already did, thanks. I will be using my Zoom to log him in. Okay, you are simply awesome. Uh, does it, in, in the norms of your organization, is it normal to inform someone that is simply awesome in all caps with an exclamation mark um, about just a, what appears to be a simple notice that this is who we're you know, going to have at the meeting, um, you know, and here's, here's the, the means by which to get to the meeting. I would say it's normal to thank people. Well, sure, but simply awesome is kind of, a, kind of an emphatic thanks. Would you not agree with that? I would agree with that. 
And we see that she said simply awesome. You see this, correct? Yes. Uh, and you're telling me that it's normal in the Boston culture to, that this is normal to call someone simply awesome for simply providing the, the Zoom meeting information? This is normal? I would say that's not normal. Oh, what's that normal about it? I would, I would say that a, simply, a simple thank you would suffice, but perhaps this is how you lady communicates. I should probably talk to you lady about that. Sure. Okay. Let's scroll up to see if there's anything else of relevance. Uh, uh, sorry, please. Uh, I renamed you. So okay, scrolling up, scrolling up. Well, these people, I mean, that's not inconsistent with the rest of these uh, communications. They appear to be, there's a lot more exclamation marks than I see in, in my business, that's for sure. But I'm not mad about that in the slightest. I like people thanking people. That's nice. Um, so. This appears to be the exhaustion of use on here. So we're at exhibit five, once again, 2733. I'm gonna call this the simply awesome email. Awesome being in caps, of course, exclamation mark. All right, let's go on to number next one. Scrolling to the bottom, 2723 to 2726. Let's begin with the bottom most, please, so that we see a proper chronological order. Uh, what did we say, 23 to 26? To 26. Okay. Um, this email correspondence begins, it's a series of emails that begins on June 17, 2020, from, once again, Michael Benetti to um, uh, Madam Witness, does Carrie Jordan ring of any bells. Yes. Who is that? Carrie was my former co-worker. He was the technology manager okay. for the city council. And please refresh my memory. At the time, uh, who was you lady? What, what, what was the, your role the staff director for the city council. Okay. For, for all the city council or any particular person? For um, central staff. Okay. So basically, central staff is talking about logging in Father Scrimma? Central staff is not talking, uh, well, uh, Michael Benetti, mm -hmm. who Councilor Edwards it, um, was inviting this person, is emailing Kerry because mm. he is the individual at this time, the, all of the city council meetings were on Zoom because of the pandemic. So Michael is emailing Kerry and you lady the name so they know to let this person in. Okay. For the meeting. Okay. That's Let's, the context of. This. Yeah, that's that's what begins our, our discussion with whatever's going on with these documents. So let's scroll up ever so slightly just to the next email, enough to see the body, the who, and the when. Okay, that's good. Um, September 15, 2020, at 6 54 a.m., someone writes Good morning, you lady. Pastor Alcevedo from. Leon D. Huras will be joining us to pray over the council. I've seen, seen him here. He just needs the Zoom link and details. Thank you again, Pastor Acevedo. Zoom you tomorrow, Julia. Okay. Uh, once again, we are at what I would probably describe as an impasse as to whether this is a last minute email or just an a scheduling email. No problem. We'll skip over the impasse. Scrolling up slightly, please. Uh, let's see here. Zoom link. Don't care. Skip. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Scrolling up, scrolling up. Okay, let's pause here. June 24 at 805. Someone writes, please. Um, this is from Councilor Bach. Dear you lady, oh. connecting you here with the Reverend Paige Fisher, who is going to do our opening prayer today. If you could get her the Zoom link and all that she needs to get connected, that would be great. Thanks, Kenzie. Is that the same thing as we just read? Scroll down again? I don't um, remember. I don't think so. No, the other one was from Julia. Huh. That's odd. So September 15, September 15, June 24. Can you make any sense of this? Um, it's just, it's counselors emailing you lady with the name. Okay. So this is basically just internal communication as to who and when invitations are happening from the from at least the city's perspective. 
they were on the they were on Wednesdays, so they mm-hmm. those are the dates of the council meeting. Correct. Yeah. So it looks like Councillor Bach is giving you lady the person's name so that she can give them the Zoom link and make sure that they're in the Zoom meeting. Perfectly understood. Let's uh, scroll up some more. Uh, basically the same thing again. Let's scroll up. Invitation info. Okay. Just scrolling. We're just skimming at this point. This all seems to be pretty much the same thing. I'm confused as to why there's one PDF. Oh, I get it. I sent RFPs and I just got basically a document dump. These are probably just what my people said. These are things that I should look at. And I'm looking at them for the first time with you. So let's scroll up, scroll up. Okay. What is this again? This is 6, 2723 to 2726. Uh, miscellaneous. Um, Madam Witness, how would you describe this, this PDF? I can't think of the designation. Emails regarding invocation, Zoom links. Re Zoom. Uh, uh, sorry, Zoom. Uh, wh- wh- how would you, prior to saying Zoom links, you said emails regarding um, um, invocation names Zoom. for Zoom links. Invocation links. In, in, I don't know if you want to indicate that they're internal. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Internal, miscellaneous internal emails about uh, invocation Zoom links. Great. Uh, number next one, please. Oh, wait, uh, for, for benefit of a clear record, we just finished looking at Exhibit 6 that begins Bates Stamps 2723 to 26, so designated. Uh, let's move on. Can we get a quick question? Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, time is 127 or off the record. Okay, we are back on the record. The time is 138. Okay, I um, errantly neglected to uh, take note of something else that was important on uh, Defendants 2320, which we had uh, an undesignated number three. I now see why this was brought to my attention. Let's scroll up ever so slightly to uh, something about honoree. There it is, honoree. Um, What city of Boston does honoree mean in whatever this kind of document is that we're looking at? I believe that document, it refers to the Black History Month event. So honoree, each counselor was um, picking um, a black member from their community to Mm -hmm. honor at the event. Okay, and how do you know, well, first of all, is this name, how, how did you come to that conclusion? Help me, help me draw the dots. Because I knew about job. the event because I was working at the city council in my same job at oh. the time. So I knew about the event and I knew the counselors were picking people to recognize at the event. Basically, you're a member. Yes. Okay, cool. No, no longer care about this one. Let's skip to number next one, which is after 27, 23 to 26. Oh, I'm sorry, are there, are there more things that we I should care about on here? Yeah, I don't know, that looks important. Uh, I think we're looking for uh, 27, 23 to 26 was the preceding one. Okay, so next one here? Yeah, number next one. Okay, we're looking at uh, Bates number all the way at the bottom, please. Uh, that's a signature page, let's scroll up. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. 27, 29, all the way. Uh, Could we zoom in so Madam Witness can uh, read the body here? Uh, also me. Uh, let's see here. This appears to be a June 10, 2020 email from one Michael Benetti with whom we are adequately familiar. Uh, have we already gone through this? This looks familiar. Um, it does look yeah, familiar. I'm pretty sure this is the same thing. We're gonna skip, wait, wait, wait. Let's go all the way to the top. Maybe there's something that I missed. Um, How about this one? Uh, Tuesday, June 16. Hi, Michael. Would you have some for invocation tomorrow? Um, I don't remember if I informed you or the counselor. Apologize if I didn't. Um, And as I recall, you lady is the staff, the central staff chief. Basically, you lady, it seems to me that you lady administers support staff for all of the counselors. Is that? Yes. 
Okay, so uh, support staff head talks to uh, guy for counselor. Would you have some for invocation tomorrow? Um, I deduce under the circumstances that some more adequately or more appropriately means someone for an invocation tomorrow. Is that consistent with your reading? Yes. Okay, and once again, that was June 16, 2020. Uh, so number seven, once again, please someone remind me what my bait stamps are. Uh, very bottom, 2729. And I'm gonna call this just another scheduling email. Okay, and uh, scrolling back at the top, the, the notice was issued on uh, uh, June, while well, the inquiry was made on June 16, which Google hopefully tells us is Tuesday and at 1.24. What time do the counselor meetings happen again? They happen at Wednesdays, um, on Wednesdays at noon. At noon, so this is basically about a day beforehand. Um, and the, the agenda items actually don't get cemented in until Tuesday. So this doesn't seem unusual the agenda, in terms of timing. The agenda items are completed on Monday afternoon. The agenda is released on Monday afternoon. The mm -hmm. invocations are not part of the agenda. Mm. Huh. So when is the decision to lock in who's doing the invocation? Uh, like when's the deadline? Surely Again, at some point it's too that late. is the counselor invites someone I imagine counselors have different mm -hmm. time frames. Yeah. This email is between you lady and Michael Benetti. And for context purposes, it was during the time when the city council was remote because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it looks as if you lady is asking Michael for the name so that you lady is able to let the individual into the Zoom meeting because you needed to be let into the Zoom meeting because it was for the counselors and they were participating via Zoom. It was on the city of Boston's website for the public to watch because there, are no, there is not a public comment period for city council meetings. So uh, that is why it, it, it appears that Julie was looking for the name so she would have, so she would know who to let into the Zoom meeting. And, I, to give the info, and to give the link to that individual. Okay, I understand that's the proposition, but all I see is this text. So where are you getting that extra information that's not in the text? Because I know how the process works, because I worked there at the time. Okay, so... Th and we were all on Zoom, so we would all get the Zoom link. Mm -hmm. And you lady would need to know, because she was the one that let people in, you lady Valdez or Carrie Jordan would let people, the counselors, people meaning staffers and counselors into the Zoom meeting. Okay, and um, to be discreet here, the next, after the question, would you have someone for an, advocate, uh, an invocation tomorrow is followed up with, I don't remember if I informed you or the counselor, apologize if I didn't, why would this person need to inform uh, the recipient of this email or the counselor? Um, what's the inform part tell you? I don't know if that's, I don't know if she meant to put, if I asked you or the counselor, I don't, I don't know. Well, I mean. What she means by that. We're stuck with the text, right? I mean, we can't change the text with what we propose this email could mean, or it, it has to, this email very clearly requires some kind of an information being transmitted uh, I, I proffer, do you disagree with this proffer? It looks as if she's asking if they have someone for the invocation. She's asking a question. I understand that. I asked you a yes, no question, but I didn't receive a yes or a no. Yes. Okay. Um, scrolling up slightly. Okay. Uh, and. <laughs> Uh, in case I didn't mention this already, this is, we just finished talking about number seven, 2729. Uh, is this 2729? Am I mistaken scrolling down again to the, to the bait stamp? Yep. Uh, 2729, I described this as another scheduling email dated June 16, Tuesday at 1.24 p.m. for a Wednesday, Wednesday 
at noon uh, meeting. Okay. Eight. What does our number eight look like? Uh, scrolling down to the bottom, this is 2720, wait, 2771. Okay, scrolling up just enough to, whoa, 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 the first email, please. Um, hmm, well, this is confusing. Let's scroll up ever so slightly. It looks like the first email is offset, dated September 15 at 6.54 a.m. Um, and witness, I believe you already read this email to me. Yes. Okay, skipping eight, deleting 2771. All right, uh, number next one. We have a December 12, 2020 email, uh, bait stamp number please, 2849. This is an email from an RZ to uh, Kim Janey at boston.gov. Bunch of people are CC'd. Who's Kim Janey at boston.gov? At the time, she was city council president. Okay. She was and also a district councilor. Okay, and so this is December 12, 2020 at 226 a.m. Eastern time. RZ asks to functionally the council for our purposes about invocation requests states dear president Janey will you please schedule me to read invocation remotely in the next city council meeting uh, sorry Boston city council meeting uh, and inform me accordingly I am a Hindu leader thank you sincerely sender um, so it appears that it's not just TST who wants in and is not being invited uh, to me is that consistent with your reading of this email yes Okay, uh, and once again, that's 2849 to confirm, please. Uh, yes. Thank you. Is... Confirmed as 2849, that's number eight. Email dated December, or actually scheduling request, or invitation request is how I'll call it. Um, I'm gonna call this Hindu, Hindu or Hindi? Hindu. Hindu invitation request. request and that satisfies my purposes so let's move on to the next one. Oh, uh, sorry num number next one um, whatever the next PDF or, or are we done with PDFs uh, let's see. okay that's the last one Nick found but there's another one that's more important to me so we're gonna take another break while I find it Okay, the time is 149, we're off the record. Hey, we're back on the record, the time is 245. Okay, um, due to technological errors, I have an email dated October 19, 2017 that I can't put up on the projector. We will fix this later. Um, the bait stamp number is 2890. This comes from 2890. Once again, it's not gonna be up there. It's on my tablet. You guys gotta come huddle in and take a look at it. I will zoom in. Everyone come see. This is an email from Elena Olson for a benefit of the record, dated Thursday, October 19, 2017 to Madam Witness, could you please state the, uh, the, the person's name here? To Anissa Sabi George. Okay, and who is that in the city? She was a former at-large city councilor. Okay, and as of October 19, 2017, was that her position? Yes. Okay, recently Mayor Wu uh, had a, an opponent who I believe is the same person. Is this the mayoral candidate opponent against Mayor Wu? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, please read for benefit of the record in full uh, this, this uh, paragraph here at the body. It is absurd that this group feels entitled to being invited to give remarks at the beginning of the council meeting. And frankly, it's insulting to all of the amazing religious and secular leaders who are invited. They are invited because of all of the incredible work that they do across the city, work to end youth violence, work to provide shelter and stability to the homeless or compassion and support for people in recovery. I will not give up the opportunity to highlight one of these amazing leaders who I am privileged to work with for the Satanic Temple. The City Council does important, serious work for the people of Boston, and when we invite someone to participate in our meeting, it is out of a profound respect, not a sense of obligation. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm having a technical issue. Can I just have one 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, let's let's just, take a break. I just have to restart. No, no problem. Okay, we two, got plenty of time. That is 247. We're off the record. Okay, we are back on the record. The time is 2.48. Okay, due to technological issues, um, we, are, we are back on the record. I'm going to take over with some expository uh, background and then follow up with the questions. So um, I take note, please everyone else also take note that this bottom of the screenshot states in bold. Please remember, this is a City of Boston email account and the content is a matter of public record, period. Um, Elena Olson being the chief of staff for uh, Mayor Wu's former opponent, um, I know nothing more about this email, which is why I called for the 30B6 deposition about all discovery, because I figured stuff like this would probably be in here. Um, so, City of Boston, is it true that your position, or at least your employee's position, finds it absurd that TST would demand legally an invitation? It looks as if... Objection. It looks as if um, that's the statement that was prepared. Okay, and it appears to be a matter of public record, and contemporaneously so, that Mayor Wu's former political opponent found it to be a matter that, quote, I will not give up the opportunity to highlight one of these amazing leaders who I am privileged to work for or work with for the Satanic Temple. Uh, end quote. That is the text of the email. Do you agree with me that that's the text of the email? Matt, I'm sorry, are you reading, is this an email to Anissa Asabi George or from Anissa Asabi George? This is from Elena, the chief of staff, to Anissa. Okay, so that's not, Anissa. those aren't, just because I can't see this email, those aren't Anissa Asabi George's words, those are the, the emailer's words? Uh, no, no, this is her words by her person on her behalf. That's what we're looking at right now. Again, basic agency principles flow up to her, which in turn flow up to the city, body public. So um, I'm very confused by this email because it seems to me as if it's exclusionary, which is why, City of Boston, I inquire into you as to your employee uh, whether you think as well that your employee appears to be something uh, giving up an opportunity for someone good so that they have to give someone to uh, an opportunity to TST. Would you agree with me that that's your employee's statement? Objection. So this is the same type of objection as before, that she can't speak to whatever this person's state of mind is in this email. Oh, so I should talk to Anissa then. That's who I should talk to in you a deposition. should talk to someone other than Christine O'Donnell, correct? Okay, cool. We will depose her personally, um, unless you object right now. Because it seems to me that before when I sought to take Mayor Wu's individual testimony for the purpose of talking about that there video, uh, you know, it was a whole thing. So I'm, I'm confused as to what's going on here. You're blocking me with Michelle Wu. You're blocking me with a her. Are you going to block me with Michelle Wu again? I'm, I don't agree with the characterization that you just provided, mm. but... Christine is not here to testify about what the other people's opinions are or the actions that they took on a specific occasion. That's true. City of Boston, I would like to depose your former employee about this matter. Do you have an objection about this? I will make objections as to who is or is not deposed, and if we get a deposition subpoena, we'll cross that bridge and we get to it. But I'm not making a, a statement on the record now as to what the city will or will not do in response to a deposition subpoena that's properly noticed. I see. Very good. Okay, well then, we're at an impasse because I called the 30B6 deposition for all things discovery related, and this witness cannot speak to it, and you're also not providing me a different witness today who can speak to it, and you're also not agreeing that I can depose the person. So how do you propose that we resolve this issue? This, to me, is not responsive to any 30B6 topic for which Christine O'Donnell is identified. Really? It's not within the 30B6 designation. That is your Nicole O'Connor's for and on behalf of the city of Boston's position on this matter. If you correct? want to point out to me which paragraph you think it's responsive to, I'm happy to take a look. I would be very happy to. Very, very happy to indeed. Paragraph 30. Any documents provided by the city to TST in discovery. Very end, page 9, right above the signature. To the extent that you want to ask about what the intent was of the document, to me that's a totally different request. So I think we have a different understanding of, of what this means. This is, a, she has testified about what this document is, 
But as far as what the person's intent was who sent it, that's a totally different question. Mm -hmm. And so where in 30 does it eliminate intent from any? I mean, we're not having a discussion about the semantics. It's never how I interpreted it. We have a disagreement then about what is within the scope of a 30 v 6 depot. Ah, okay, that's fine. Let's start over from the top and see if I missed anything else of importance. Um, okay, on to phase two of the deposition. Uh, we've covered your identity, we've covered your scope, we've covered your agency, we've covered that you don't have any other relationships, grounds for your testimony, we covered that, what investigation you did, covered that. Um, sounds good. Uh, Madam, Madam Witness, did the city have you investigate uh, Mayor Wu's former political opponent on any of the discovery that it provided, namely this email that we just looked at? I looked at the emails that were produced. I don't specifically recall this one. There was, it was numerous pages. That's fine. Uh, could we put up the next, um, the next uh, email, the number next one? I do just want to put on the record that we had a discussion about this during our call about the deposition, and you agreed that you would provide any emails that you had particular concerns about. Well, yeah, that I you, forgot well, that. I'm, well, that's, the, that's, that's part of the problem here, and I just want to put this on the record, that you said that you would pull certain emails that you intended to inquire of the witness about, and I would make sure that she was prepared on those emails. We never received from you the emails that you were intending to inquire about. So to now suggest that she's not prepared or, she, you know, is, is not appropriate giving our past discussions. Okay, so I want to be abundantly clear here. My understanding from the city's attorney, for and on behalf of the city's attorney's behalf, is that it provided these, the city, which is to say it, it, the city, received requests, document requests from me about a religious discrimination case produced emails, one of which appears to be a smoking gun of religious discrimination, received a 30B6 notice saying, I want to ask about everything that you've been given, uh, you have given to me, with, and the city did not think to have the witness look at the smoking gun email? So when we spoke, as you recognize, the federal rules require us to confer prior to a 30B6 deposition to make sure we're all on the same page. I flagged this concern that there were so many emails I couldn't possibly prepare her on all of them, and you agreed to provide me in two weeks in advance of the deposition with the emails that you intended to inquire about. I you see. You didn't do that, so she's not prepared to testify about this particular email further than what she already has. I see. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the next one, and we'll all see it together. Scrolling all the way to the bottom, well, actually, scroll all the way to the bottom, please. And by the way, the last one was number 92890. I call it the absurd email. Uh, number 10, this is number 3374. Uh, let's see here, scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up a little bit more, continuing, continuing. Okay, uh, a little bit more because we need to be able to see who sent it. There we go. Okay, this is 3373, I apologize, to 3374. On February 14, 2019, which I take notice during the course of this litigation, um, Molly Jacobson at Jacobson Strategy emails to someone uh, at Boston Herald a forwarded message stating, hi Megan, again with Boston Herald, which I presume everyone takes note is a publication of general circulation in Boston, is that correct? Yes. Thank you. So Boston Herald takes note that uh, from Megan, please let me know if I can schedule an interview with the Satanic Temple regarding this breaking news. Breaking news is the characterization of importance. Thanks, exclamation mark. Details unnecessary. Scrolling down, we're just looking for the word absurd. Ah, there it is. Uh, on 3374, line 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, the sentence begins, preceding sentence, uh, line 3, that is to say, uh, the sentence begins midway through. The city council maintains that this practice is non-discriminatory, a claim that TST views as absurd. So we receive your statement that it's absurd. We respond in kind. 
that your position is absurd, I feel like we're at an impasse here. Um, is that fair to say? City of Boston, witness. Yes. Okay, so scrolling up a little bit more. Okay, pausing here. Boston Herald then on February 14, 2019, which again I take note as during the pendency of this dispute. Um, subject, story running tomorrow about claim against city council to someone at boston.gov. Madam Witness, who is this boston.gov person, if you know? At the time, um, David Vitterini was chief of staff to, at the time, Councillor Wu. Councillor Wu, uh, Councillor Wu's person received notice that TST, um, generally speaking, takes issue with not getting an invite um, as of at least 2019. Is that a correct understanding of this document here? Yes. Um, now, Madam Witness, we've talked about Councillor Wu before on or around 2017, things changed where people stopped giving or stopped receiving money for and in consideration of providing the blessing to the city. Um, the importance being 2017. Is that a correct recollection of mine about yes. your prior testimony? Um, did you take note of the timing of the uh, email that we took note of earlier? No. Okay. Uh, let's uh, suffice it to say 2017. Everyone agree? They remember it. Otherwise, we can see it again. Any objections, Christine. Madam Witness? Do you do you recall that it was 2017? That the council stopped paying. Well, no. More particularly, that. Um, uh, oh, that Mayor TST was, reached out. No, no, no. Uh, the the prior the prior exhibit that we looked at this email dated. Uh, let's see here, October 19, 2000. It's not up there. It's on my thing. Uh, October 19, 2017. Everyone can see, Madam Witness, in particular. Uh, oh yes. Yes, yeah. right here. So, I couldn't remember the date. Yeah, of course not. It's a date. Who would remember that? Um, so. It seems to me that there is a very heavy cluster of activity in and around the city, which I'm being precluded from talking about with you. Um, who do you think would be the best person for me to talk to to shed light on what happened that the uh, money stopped changing hands and also that uh, your other employee stated that they would not give up the opportunity to highlight one of these amazing leaders to work, uh, who I am privileged to work with for the Satanic Temple. That's the end of the sentence, but I take the implication that uh, they are not privileged to work with the Satanic Temple, and also the Satanic Temple is not amazing, nor are they leaders in the public. Objection? You can answer. The payment issue that <coughs> was Councillor Wu when she was President Wu, okay. again, around 2016, 2017. Okay. And any other questions about the intent of the councillors would be for the councillors themselves. I agree. Um, is it normal for a chief of staff inside the organization to make press release-like statements? It depends on the councillor, but it's, it is normal, generally normal. Okay. All I have is bookending quotes, you know, beginning this email and ending this email. Um, did you, in the course of your investigation, run into anything that could shed light documentary-wise, like in terms of literally physical documents I could look at, or, you know, electronic data consisting of the same, um, within the city that could help me understand, without talking to uh, Mayor Wu's former political opponent, why she found it to be absurd for TST to insist on this invitation. No. So I really have to talk to her. Yes. OK. Same for Wu. I, you're the best person to have talked about it, and you can't talk about it. So I really have to talk to Wu, right? Yes. OK. Um, let's see. Let's scroll up to see if there's anything of interest here. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Huh. Okay, so I see then that this press request for invitation, oh, I'm sorry, I don't think we ever covered this. So going back to the next one, uh, this email dated February 14 from Boston Herald to Boston.gov, which, uh, uh, Madam Witness, could you please remind me who this guy is? 
At the time, chief of staff for Councillor Wu. Okay, so Boston Herald asks Councillor Wu about this present dispute, um, wherein it gets forwarded up to Elizabeth uh, Pimentel. Is that a correct name? Pimentel, yeah. Pimentel, I apologize. Um, who is that? She was the chief of staff for Councillor Campbell. And? And at that time, Councillor Campbell was, um, no, no, at that time she was just Council, Councillor Campbell. Okay, I remember. Can we call, no, excuse me, sorry. She was Council President in 2019. I seem to remember seeing an email, ah, here we go. Um, so exhibit one to the first amended complaint, this is uh, doc, 16-1, also known here apparently as ECF 16-1. Um, another email for benefit of counsel, I'm showing them on my tablet because uh, it's faster. Um, so this is my understanding of the email that TST sent, oh, there we go, to Andrea Campbell on October 2, 2018. Um, that's my understanding, but I didn't receive it from the city. Does the city dispute that on or around October 2, 2018, these satanic temples sent an email to Andrea Campbell at boston.gov with CC to Michelle Wu at boston.gov requesting um, essentially an invitation? Is that a subject of dispute? No. Okay. Um, the details of the email I don't care about and I don't want to waste your time with. Okay. Let's just make sure I don't miss anything at all. Um, we're back on the 30B6 matters of exam matters for examination. It's not up there. I'm gesturing generally. Um, so, Madam Witness, if you could take a look with me while we go through it. Okay, one we've dealt with. Two, what do we got here? Uh, both as a general matter. Okay, I feel like I've kind of covered this. Ah, this text. Oh, no, never mind. That's just, okay. When, I've seen this policy written down somewhere. I don't recall. Have you seen the policy written down anywhere? I say policy. I'm using your words. The custom is the word I would use. I have not. Okay. All right. Um, and to be a little bit more precise, I remember seeing it in an email from Michelle Wu to TST, essentially stating the position that we don't have to give you an invite if we don't want to. Is that a fair recitation of the email? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So background on ceremony, when it first arose, covered it, legal challenge. Have, has anyone challenged this before, this, this custom, legally? No. Okay. Covered it. Mm. Sorry, forgive me. Mm. Okay. 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 Very good. Surrounding payment, covered that. Uh, record keeping policies, I don't remember if we addressed that. You said they hold, they hold it seven years and it goes to Treasury Department. Is For payments. For payments specifically, that's fine. I don't really care about the rest of it. Okay, uh, city's record keeping policies surrounding written communications sent to receive money. Okay, record keeping policies, have y'all given me anything or everything? Has anything mysteriously gone missing? Things of that nature? No. no. Interested written communications up to the date of the original. Okay, so here's paragraph six where I also, I felt adequately specified that it's an intra-city written communication about TST's invocation demand. Apparently that was unclear. I apologize for wasting your time once again, Madam Witness. Seven, dates, times, attendees, subjects of discussion. Ah, those are agendas, I can get those later. Subject of bases, that's a woo question. General information about any individuals or groups have demanded participation. Okay, number nine, we saw the Hindu leader, Raj Zed, uh, if memory serves, uh, Mr. Zed. Um, has anyone else other than TST, well, let me, let me strike that and start over. Um, other than TST and Mr. Zed, has anyone else, to the best of your knowledge, requested an invitation? No. Okay, they always only receive the invitation. Yes. They never have any discussions off the record or anything like that that you're aware of, at least because the city doesn't keep contemporaneous records of the fact that discussions may or may not be happening between 
uh, counselors and you know potential officiants. Correct. Okay. Subjective bases for why each counselor did or did not heed the demand described in nine. Uh, that's a woo question. 11, oh, actually, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Madam Witness, would you agree with me this paragraph 10, the subjective bases for why each counselor did or did not heed the demand described in paragraph 9 from January 1, 2011 to present would minimally address uh, Michelle Wu and also uh, Michelle Wu's former political opponent? Yes. Okay. 11, uh, identifying information, eh, I don't care about that. 12. Same thing. Thirteen. Needs to switch. Have you been over these? I've forgotten these since I sent them. I have been, but I don't okay. remember all That's, of them. Yeah, there's a lot of words We've, in yeah, here. Yeah, I've gone over them. Okay, any instances in which the city had a vacancy? Okay, so we covered instances in which the city had a vacancy. I feel like it's adequately clear that vacancies happen, there are, you know, needs to fill and then that need for filling it does not usually happen until sometimes at least of the times that we saw. I say usually, let me back up. There are provably instances where a need was unmet as of, call it the day before the meeting. Do you recall those exhibits? I recall them, but I don't agree with the fact that a need was unmet. Okay. Um, what is what is the subject of dispute there? Because a lot of those documents were internal between staff from different offices where a staffer was asking for information in order to prepare notes for their respective boss and other documents regarding the names were for, uh, internal for purposes of sending out the Zoom link. Okay. So from, from those documents alone, it is not clear to me that it was the day before when the person given the invocation knew. They could have known a couple of weeks before. They could have known a month before. Those were just internal emails where other individuals were asking for the name so that they could complete their jobs. Okay. Um, I propose, rather than deposing each of the individuals, and asking them like one question to issue an interrogatory. Uh, would it suit the organization's purpose that we reduce the number of depositions and instead resolve the questions as to why this need was unmet as of that date? Informational need, I apologize, why this informational need was left unmet until such time, and more importantly, when that informational need is typically filled. I think written discovery would be an excellent tool Great. Um, I don't want to play semantics with that. So um, I propose to write it out right now. Interrogatory. Number one, or whatever, in, interrogatory number next one. For each exhibit. made reference, actually, I can actually identify them discreetly. So scheduling emails, we've got five, four, six, seven. four through seven. I propose to have an interrogatory explicitly state for each of exhibits four through seven, provide colon, whatever's in that 30B6 deposition notice, I'm gonna copy paste it and specifically sub itemize it. Might be letters, might be bullet points, I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. For now, we're gonna do A. Um, I don't feel the need to copy paste those in handwriting. Am I going to get a form objection when I send an interrogatory for each of exhibits four through seven, please provide A through whatever uh, discreetly copied? 
I, I don't these know, remember what exhibits you're referencing. I can't, That's okay. I can't give you an answer to that question without being served with an actual written discovery request. But I'd rather, oh. I agree with you that rather okay. than have unnecessary depots, well, I'd much rather just answer interrogatories. Yeah, so I, I'll well, I do too. to be reasonable about that. Okay, so more particularly for each of exhibits four through seven, please identify with particularity as follows. A, why was there a vacancy at that time? B, the date of the meeting in which there was a vacancy for the invocation at that time? And C, how, if at all, how, if at all, the time slotted for the invocation ceremony? The text ends, but I'll fill it off. Uh, how, if at all, the time slotted for the invocation ceremony typically gets filled? Like when? When is this normally filled? Is it abnormal that Tuesday right before the, in my opinion, right before the meeting, we don't know who's blessing the thing? Those seem like reasonable questions that can be answered. Okay, I agree that they are reasonable questions. I agree that they can be answered. I'm questioning you as to whether there's going to be a form objection with that exact text that I, I just described. I don't described. know. I, I can't imagine so. I would like you to please waive any opportunity to waive that. Otherwise, we're going to have to have another 36 depot. I think this is a depot. discussion we can have after the deposition. If you want to do it on the record, we can do that. I strongly prefer to have the deposition, the conversation on the record, because you and I took materially different understandings of our last phone call. That's why we're having it here and now. Correct. Yes, correct. What do you so, mean by a form of objection? Like, this seems like a, a waste of everyone's time, but what do you mean by a form of objection? A form of objection is one to the effect of, I don't understand what this interrogatory is No, asking. you're not going to get an objection like that. Okay, that's a form of objection. Great. Okay, so, now, number next one, 14. Any instances in which the invocation ceremony did not literally employ a supernatural deity to give advice and guidance to counselors? Uh, Madam Witness, you've been seemingly functionally a part of all of them you're probably the best person to talk about these invocation ceremonies how often do people give benediction uh, for satan to bless the matter there hasn't been any never uh, how often do people suggest that satan as a general concept is bad that hasn't happened not ever not for the invocation i'm confused not for the invocation or during the invocation? There hasn't been references that I recall. Well, that earlier you said not ever. Now you're telling me not that you recall. So now my job task is going to be to go find each and every instance that someone said something bad about Satan so that I can clip it out and have, I don't know, however, long, however many clips we need for trial. So are you going to go back on that or are you just going to agree that sometimes people say bad things about Satan? Objection. You can answer. To the best of my knowledge, I haven't heard anyone in the invocation say anything bad about Satan. To the best of your recollection as we speak yes. today. Yes. But you reserve the opportunity to change that at trial should, hypothetically, I go through YouTube and find a whole bunch of instances of people talking bad stuff about Satan. Sure. Correct? Great. All right, number 15. Any instances in which the invocation ceremony addressed a topic which was not reflected on the agenda, for example, praying for emotional relief from a tragedy, uh, how often do these blessings entail non-council agenda items? Generally, they do not, they do not address agenda items. Mm. Sometimes they may speak to issues that are going on in the city, mm -hmm. but all the agenda items have specific docket numbers, mm -hmm. and I do not recall any instance where an invocation referenced a specific docket number. Invocations may, may reference topics in the city, such as violence, homelessness, hunger, things like that. But other than that, the invocations do not reference specific items on the agenda. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry, um, I'm using the word agenda. You use the word docket to refer to that. I, I got confused. Uh, the agenda is made up of dockets. Yeah, okay. Um, and, and, and they were all online, available online? Yes, yes. Uh, in my parlance, docket literally just refers to a court's docket, so I, I'm not familiar with your words. Uh, going back to this, so it seems fairly often as a fair response to I don't know, sometimes people talk about, actually pretty much exclusively, uh, they don't address specific topics on the agenda, as was my understanding of your response. Correct, yes. Okay. How often 
expanding somewhat beyond the agenda, how often does this, this invocation not just bless the event or, or you know, the proceeding, but just more generally give blessings? For example, we saw uh, the former, uh, in, in the earlier YouTube clip, the priest giving blessings to the, the con or not congregants, the uh, counselors' families. I asked an unclear question, I apologize. How often do they bless people or things or ideas outside of the notion of this discrete event? They, I don't know of an exact number mm -hmm. because the individuals use different terminology. Sure. But the invocations are there to recognize the seriousness of the work. Sure. They're done before the counselors begin their proceedings for the day. I do not recall how many times a person giving an invocation has blessed the counselor's family. Okay. Well, at least one is the, I mean. Sure, we all saw it today. Yeah. So, I mean, really, that's, that's all the number I care about. Um, now, going back more discreetly to the question, would you take note um, would you take note if you're watching a blessing happen and they happen to bless something that's not the discrete event because to you you're just hearing a blessing? Is that something that would happen? I'm not sure I understand. Would you take note, like for example, did you take note that this uh, uh, priest or whatever uh, blessed the counselor's families? Did you take note of that because I took note of that? I did not take note of that. Okay, so you don't recall, but it's entirely possible with the information that we have available that that's happened other times as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Any instances in which you guessed? Um, is it the general norm that these blessings generally propose that the council is subservient to some literal supernatural deity? That is not the general norm. I know we all saw a video today mm -hmm. where the person giving the invocation referred to the counselors as God's servants, but that generally isn't the norm. Okay. As a proportion, how often do they say, you know, generally bless the event and more particularly, these are literally your slaves? Objection. You can answer. Um, I can't give an exact number. I am not sure if, and I, honestly I can't even recall if the video we saw today referenced the counselors as slaves. I don't recall any instance where they were referenced as slaves. Occasionally there may be a reference to the counselors as servants, sheep, however, um, I do not recall where there's ever been a reference of the counselors doing God's work, where that's the norm okay. for the invocation. Um, and the, are, you, are you familiar with uh, biblical history and text, literally the, the mm. book, the Bible? I know what the Bible is. I'm not a okay. scholar on it. Eh, you don't have to be. You know it wasn't written in English, right? Originally, it was not originally written in sure. English. It, it had to be translated for something for us to have it in English. Do you know how many times it was translated? I do not. Okay, do you know when it was originally written? I do not. If I told you it was written, give or take, uh, I mean, it was about a 200 year period, but call it about up to 200 common era slash, uh, well, actually, do they call it common era nowadays? You know, within the past 2000 years, it's not been written. So about 2,000 years ago it was, wide margin. Uh, back then they didn't have butlers, you would agree with me, yes? Yes. They had slaves, right? Objection, you can answer. Um, yes. Okay, uh, but the Lord's servants to you, city of Boston, not this particular witness, city of Boston, it's not your position that Lord's servants is really meaningfully different from Lord's slaves. Or is it? Objection. She can't offer the city's opinion on that particular question of ah, the city's oh. impression or use of that. Then I will, I will ask you, what is the material distinction between servants and slaves Objection. in your apartments? You can answer as to you individually. I mean, my understanding, um, not in a biblical 
sense. Um, sir, I'm sure some use the term interchangeably. Servants may be paid in during some times. Slaves are it's forced labor. Yes, yes, it is. I agree that slavery is forced labor. Uh, it's subservience. You don't have a choice. That's obsequiousness is the word I would use. Um, that priest described governmental employees, in my opinion, as lords' slaves. Uh, she used the words lord's servants, but it's a reference to a book that says Aramaic words for literally slaves, or so I proffer. As you sit here right now, are you in a position to challenge my proffer? Objection. Yes, sir. She can't Is, answer that question. She can answer yes or no. Challenge your proffer as, she, to, as to what? I, I don't understand your question. Christine, I don't know if you understand that question. No, I, do I not. object to speaking objections. Okay. There shall be no speaking objections, or that's going to be an issue for me. Okay. Okay, no speaking objections. I know we've been doing a little loosey goosey, but no instructing the witness on the record. I'm not instructing the witness. I'm confused by your question. It's a form of objection. I can't even make heads or tails of that question. Okay. The form of a form of objection is object, please, can, please answer. That's the full statement. Otherwise, it's a speaking objection, which is objectionable, and grounds for discovery sanctions. Oh, okay. Christine, answer that question if you can. Please do. Yes or no, are you in a position to disprove that in Aramaic words, 2,000 years ago, Lord's servants was meaningfully different from Lord's slaves? No. Okay. That's a woo question. 17 is just a woo question. I'm kind of just skimming through to get us through the end of this. Uh, bases or source of each? Yeah, that's a woo question. Woo question, woo question, woo question. Mm -hmm. I take note. Number 22, once again, specifically identifies any statement, inclusive any statements that were written, uh, that any counselor has made or either has prepared or has had prepared for them but did not make about Satanism, TST, its membership, or its activities. Uh, I take note that you are not prepared to talk about that uh, Mayor Wu's former political opponent email in which he found TST and its viewpoint absurd. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, just once again, making very abundantly clear that the witness was unprepared to speak to item number 22. Number 23. Nope. She's prepared to speak about 22. Oh, she is. Fantastic. So what was going on in Mayor Wu's uh, former political opponent's head when she described it as absurd that TST would think it entitled to an invite? So paragraph 22 doesn't ask for the subjective intent of the counselor. It just asks for a statement that any counselor has made. And so she has fully answered those questions today about that statement that was put up on the screen. These are matters for examination. I get to ask the who, what, when, where, why. We fundamentally disagree about that. I see. Well, you understand that my next thing is to move for discovery sanctions, yes? You, you can certainly do that. Okay. Going back to the next thing, if I can find it. Number 23 was just basically, let's talk about the invocation. Let me be abundantly clear as to the kinds of questions I want to ask. 24, city demographics. That's a good one. Um, city of Boston, do you keep official statistics of people's religious beliefs or preferences? No. OK. Um, do you feel like it would be appropriate for the city to take note of the public's religious beliefs or preferences? Objection. You can answer. No. OK. Um, why not? Objection. Um, again, you can answer. Again, this is outside the scope of the 30B6, but I will give a bit of leeway here. Thank you. I'm just not sure if it's relevant for the government's work with regard to trash pickup, um, public works, parks, things like that. I think we may have had a misunderstanding as to the question and answer. Sure. I, uh, I asked if it would be improper, not proper. Oh, okay. Um, so I, as I understand your statement, then I should have asked to make your statement make sense. Uh, would it be proper for the city to do that? And I think that would make your statement make sense. Is that correct? Objection. You can answer. So you're asking if it's proper if the city of Boston would take? Yeah, socially proper. 
Let's start with that. If the city took data on the religious demographics. Correct. If the city had a record within its own records that identified here's how many Christians are here in the city, this is the proportion of our population that identify as Christian, at least as of the date of this record. Objection. So I maintain the position that this is outside the scope of the 30B6 topics for which she is designated to testify. So noted. Uh, witness, please answer the question. No, Would so that be a right I'm or wrong? instructing my client not to answer the question. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. The of the 30B6 topics for which she is identified. Okay, and once again, because we have to keep going through this, you, Nicole O'Connor, speci are specifically directing the witness not to answer uh, a why not question as to follow up on the response to item number 24. I want to make sure Correct. I'm abundantly clear. I don't clear think that falls within the scope of topic number 24. Okay. Um, and you do not assert a privilege objection. There's correct? no privilege. I agree. Okay, 25. Relative proportionate share. Well, 25 is basically the same thing. It's a spin on the same question. Does the city take note or otherwise record or otherwise even consider the relative proportion of how many people within the city are uh, of any particular religious persuasion? No. Okay, so for example, the city doesn't have anything to compete with my Pew Research article I found on the internet that says Christianity is give or take a 55% populace pursuant to its polling practices. No. Okay. Uh, can we agree that that's probably right? Objection. Do you dispute it? You can answer. No. You do not dispute. Okay. Um, sum of money the city is. Having sat through 11 years worth of meetings, how many of these invocations are Christian? Um, I don't have an exact number. They're the majority Christian, but within Christianity, there's different sects of religion. Sure. There's also been a number of representatives from other types of religion, there's been some lay people throughout the years. So, so I cannot give an exact, I do not have an exact number or percentage. Okay, so the city will even extend invitations to non-ministers of proper religious entities to just any random person of the public who wants to give a prayer. Objection. Correct? You can answer. Again, it's by invitation from the city councilor, and mm -hmm. there have been instances where an individual from an organization that does work within the community may give the invocation. Okay. Uh, number 27. Uh, skip, skip, skip. Okay, that's the end of those topics. I posit, uh, I keep using words like posit and proffer. These are formal legal uh, uh, formal logic, I should say, not legal. L law is based on formal discourse, which is formal logic, so I kind of use the terms interchangeably. I, I apologize again, I'm bad with words. Um, a proffer is to make a statement uh, that you posit is true. Something can be either true or false. Opinions cannot be proved true or false, not because opinions are not true or false, but because the First Amendment says that the government may not punish true or false opinions. That's where we get defamation law from. So uh, it, back in the day, in common law, defamation was um, uh, strict liability. You said something bad about someone, well, you better be, re you better be ready to prove it's true. Uh, all of that changed in the mid-1960s uh, or so with a bunch of free speech stuff. I say all of that to say that irrespective as to the impasse on whether, in fact, the city of Boston finds TST's religious viewpoint to be absurd, uh, we see that at least one member of its governing body found that to be the case. You agree with me that we see that that person said that? Yes. Okay. Um, how is that not definitionally discrimination? Objection. Of the 30B6 topics. We took note earlier in the beginning of these proceedings of the answer in which the city denies that this is religious discrimination. We took note of that. I don't understand how that 
text is not definitionally discrimination. I need the city's position as to whether the city thinks that is definitionally discrimination. And that's yes or no. not a topic for which she has been designated to testify, so she can't answer that question. I see. So going back then to number 30, am I really to believe that the witness was not informed that the city's position is that it will not extend an invite to TST, they file an answer providing it to TST, it's a matter of public record, and the city's 30B6 witness is unprepared to speak as to the why not of its legal position. Is that my understanding? This witness cannot testify as to whether something constitutes discrimination or not under the law. I'm not asking the witness's opinion. I'm asking the witness to explain to me how that is not discrimination in the regular sense, not talking legal sense. Literally, just it seems to me that a conscious decision was made by a city employee in writing to explicitly state that they intentionally do not invite TST because they find them not amazing and not leaders of the public. I'm just trying to understand how I lose this case from the city's perspective, seeing as how this is my opportunity to speak to the city about its legal positions. That's what depositions are, you see. So, so same objection. That's not actually a question, though thank you for that explanation. She cannot answer the question about whether this constitutes discrimination. That is not for Christine O'Donnell to answer during this deposition. And if you, I don't think it's helpful to have continuous debate about this. If you'd like to add this to your motion. Yes, this is, sense. I believe we are in, at a point of impasse. I posit that the point of impasse is as follows, beginning quote. Now, um, whether the city discriminated against TST by refusing to extend an invitation is not a valid subject for the 30B6 deposition, correct? Correct. And that is the position of Nicole O'Connor, once again, Chief uh, Counsel of Record for the City of Boston uh, in the course and scope of uh, Nicole O'Connor's uh, employment. And Correct. just so that the record is clear, because it was not a topic for which she was designated to talk about. Great. Okay. Um, and one more, just, just to put a bow on it, there is not an assertion of privilege. Correct? There is no privilege. I agree. There is no privilege. I propose to adjourn this meeting. Sounds good. Okay, the time is 3.36. We're off the record.